project. What up, bros? Welcome to another BroGraph BroCast. I'm Dave. And I'm Matt. And joining us today is our dear friend, Gurnj, otherwise known as Billy Chitkin. Hello, hello. Glad to be on, finally. And BroGraph is a supplement to our site, BroGraph.com, which is a motion graphics tutorial site with tutorials, plugins, podcasts, and other MoGraph stuff. And on the show, we talk about everything ranging from motion graphics to Cinema 4D, After Effects plugins, render engines, doing business, doing taxes, being a contractor, or working for the man. You can email us, brograph at brograph.com. Uh, didn't get any emails this week. I'm a little disappointed. Everybody's up in the Slack. I get it. But uh, we'd love to hear from anybody who has input on the show, uh, people who aren't in the Slack, actually. Yeah, if you're not in the which Slack. Which isn't a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and uh, if you're not in the Slack, why not? Uh, let us know what Dude, you think I of the show. Dude, I can't keep up with the Slack anymore. I can't keep up either. with the Slack. Mm-mm. No, like, it's impossible. Uh, uh, Unless was, you want to read 500 plus <laughs> messages a day. I mean... I, I was talking to my sister-in-law yesterday, and she's like, oh my gosh, I get all these emails all day from work, and I'm like, yeah, try having a Slack. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm one or 200 yeah. of those messages, so I feel yes, you partially responsible. <laughs> But I mean, it's okay though. We yeah. we don't we don't mind that not at all. We just um, may or may not see everything in every channel. That's all. Yeah, I, th- That's all. I think it's a testament to the community that you guys are starting to help grow up. Um, I was talking to Chad from GSG at like the last half res, and he was like, "Yeah, we started the Slack, and you know, in like a month, we didn't even have to be involved in it anymore because there was a community that just mm-hmm. grew up on right. its own." <clears throat> yeah. Exactly. Totally. Yeah, of course. Um, a, a lot of us are the same ones in the GSG Slack and the <laughs> Motion Design right. Slack and the yeah. Slack. <laughs> there are only yeah. so many of us. Yes, but there is an infinite number of Slacks. That's true. So. Right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, as as far as Slack goes, it's really cool because it's kind of getting a a mind of its own. I mean, look mm-hmm. at the the Bro Chain yeah project that's going on right now, which I I really don't know i i wanted to participate in that so bad but i uh, we'll get there you know we got I, I we got a big a project that we're finishing up this week we got like yeah. one week left on it and then we're off to the next big project i'm yeah. sure so it's yeah. like uh we wanted to participate so bad you know maybe but i i can't guarantee it so um so yeah billy you're here aka gernge mm-hmm that's Gurge the name in all the different Gurge. places. You got you got to add like six or seven extra syllables on it. Yeah, yeah. we need more e's on the first e. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, um, mandated in my contract, right? Yeah, uh, Matt and I this morning uh, before we got on the line with you, we were uh, in a conference call like you do, and mm-hmm. I think I'm, I just have this image saved now, and so it's kind of our thing when we're on a conference call. And we're talking to like a potential new client or something. We stay on Skype and keep our Skypes muted so we can kind of look at each other and mm-hmm. give each other visual cues. Mm-hmm. And we can, you know, send each other texts and be like, oh, no, no, tell them this about the price and, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. stuff like that. Right. So this morning we get on and we're in the call. And of course, multiple people, it's a conference call. So I start screen sharing with Matt and I bring up Photoshop and I get a giant, um, a, a giant brush that's red. And I open up conference call bingo in Photoshop, and I just start marking off pretty funny. The, mm-hmm. the different things on screen sharing and showing Matt as we go. And it's funny because something will happen, and it's like, yeah, you know, we're celebrating our bingo yeah. while other people are going on about whatever they're going on. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's, it's just like I, I, I didn't, I, I, I didn't, I didn't hear that. What'd you say? It, can you hear me? Okay. Can you hear me? Okay. Yes. Bingo. I love myself a conference call. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, that's that's fun. You do have to be careful though about the muting and unmuting, like mm-hmm. wh- which mic is hot. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I definitely, I definitely. I mean, it's not related to motion design, but like you know, years ago when I would play World of Warcraft, we would have like the yeah. same thing. We would have like a a small Skype call because mm-hmm. you know you're playing with like forty people, yeah, uh, or twenty five people or whatever, and like it would yeah. be like four of us in a private Skype call, but then we would be in our like our bigger music vin- still playing, Dave. Oh, my bad. Oh. 
Sorry, um, no. go ahead. Continue like, as you were. You'd have like the main, you know, the main Ventrilo call or whatever voice program we were using. But yeah, you definitely can get into hot hot water there. I I did that once on accident when I was shooting. You know, when you'd be shooting, you'd get into a rhythm of turn off, turn on, turn off, mm-hmm. turn on. You know, like back in the day when I was shooting high school <sighs> football or something. You know, and like I'd get out of sync or out of my rhythm or mm-hmm. forget one, and then I'd be stopping recording. Oh man! And then while well, during yeah. the play, and then start recording during all the the BS that I don't need. So mm-hmm. everything you had was just shots of the ground. <laughs> yeah. Just oh, the man. huddle. You've got an hour of yeah. only huddles. Oh jeez. <clears throat> oh jeez. Yeah, so um so that's been fun. You got to be careful with the uh mute button as well because sometimes it just doesn't work. Have you ever <laughs> had that happen? Mhm. Yeah, have you ever been on a conference call and had to go to the bathroom? I try and avoid it as much as possible. Like, I mean like where you just like, you're like I have to go in here. I have to stay on the call and you just mute it or or you leave it on so you can be like uh-huh, 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 uh-huh until the very last second and then you hit mute and you go. <laughs> You know, and then you're done, and you unmute it, and you go, yeah, 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 totally. And then you mute it again, and you flush and walk out of the room, <laughs> and then unmute it again. But some, you know, sometimes the mute button doesn't work. I'm just saying, there's been a couple times where I've hit mute on my phone, and I'm still heard, and I'm like, oh, okay, <laughs> yeah, I've I've definitely fielded a conference call from like the laundromat or you know a bathroom or whatever. I've I've been there. <laughs> it just happens, you know. You just gotta. Yeah. Pray that no one calls you out. <laughs> yeah. If that mute button doesn't work and you rip one, you're in pretty big trouble, I guess. So. Jeez. I mean, what this are you going to do? Sit I, on I'm a, so glad I'm sit on a, just, just, Come on. You know, these. <laughs> I, I guarantee you that there's so many people like driving oh, in their cars boy. or sitting at their office right now that are like, oh my God, you don't know how many times I've done that. Mm-hmm. Like, you get in a two hour conference call and you're not saying anything for 45 minutes yeah. and you're just like, Oh my God. Yeah. This is torture. Yeah. I, I guarantee you there's other people on the other end of the line who have been in the bathroom before. My, my favorite is it. when, uh, like you're having a conference call and someone, so like, for example, me, Dave and someone, someone else were on a conference call the other day with, uh, talking to someone. And then the person would ask a question and it's kind of like that, that, small there's that short silence when the three people who are being asked the same question are determining who's going to be the first one to jump in you know it's right. that awkward silence before right. you're like okay who's gonna who's gonna take this one right you know and then you all go uh, I, you, the, oh, oh oh no you go oh, ahead no you go oh, ahead. no go ahead go ahead no go ahead go ahead because i really don't want to talk right now yeah right yeah yeah exactly oh the <clears> joys <throat> of anyway it's pretty good that was my favorite um, part of being a staffer was like anytime a money question would come up, I'd just be like, this yeah. isn't me, man. I just, yeah. I just press buttons and after effects. Like, yeah. I'm a button pusher. To, yeah. Talk to your uh, account manager for that mm-hmm. portion of the, yeah, you're going to, you're going to want to talk to the partner <laughs> here who runs mm-hmm. the place. Yeah. Uh, some other weekly things. This is a uh, bye week for Liam this week on the Redshift Thursdays. Hopefully, pretty soon on the bye weeks for Liam, we can start doing some other streams as well once we get this project out of the way. Also, I wanted to just uh, take a moment and talk about Coca-Cola branding and and how it got me, and I feel almost used. Um, For a long time now, you've seen the Coke bottles, the plastic bottles of 20 ounces, and they have the names on them, and they say, share a Coke with so-and-so. Yeah. Right? All of that. I really didn't think about what the purpose of that advertising is for oh, man. until the other day. Do you realize that that advertising, like for the longest time, Coke sales, like sale of Coke and Diet Coke were going down every mm-hmm. year. And when they introduced that advertising was the first year they actually started going up. Really? Yes. Hmm. Yeah. It's it's pretty amazing because it's been one of those things where I'll see it and I'll snap something like, one time I uh, saw, uh, there was, was it you, Matt, who sent me a, a picture of like Nick Campbell? Yeah, the one that yeah, said yeah. Nick and Campbell? Yeah, there was okay. one next to it that said yeah. Campbell, and then I looked and there was one that said Nicholas, Nicholas Campbell. I thought it was pretty <laughs> yeah. funny. 
So you sent me that. It's like you see it and you send a picture, haha. And then the other day I saw one and it had my daughter's name on it. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, and oh, you bought well, I'm just going to snap you? a picture. I'm like, no, I'll just buy it for her. I'm like, mm-hmm. she doesn't even drink Coke. Yep. <laughs> what am I doing? And yep. then I got to the counter and I'm like, man, I really fell for that. Yeah. I really I've got did. I've got one that says, that has my kid's name on it as well. I've also got yeah. one. Uh, I've got the last name Sanchez. I'm just looking for the Rick one. <laughs> oh, nice. Oh, I'm sure there's a Rick one. So if anyone Morgan finds one, the Rick one, harder to yeah. find. Yeah. <laughs> you ship it yeah. to Matt. Yeah. yeah, yeah, just ship it to me if you find a Rick one. <clears throat> um. Also, we got to do a shout out to Sensitive Cube. Yes, because yes, dude, yes, he, yes. He hit a year of rando renders. One year of rando renders. He's been yeah. using our rando render for a over a year now. That many yeah. dailies? Rando. What? That many dailies? That many dailies. Yeah. yeah, and he's also been doing like animations with them as well. Which is mm-hmm. way yeah. cool, dude. He I like that guy. That guy is amazing so amazing well, and it's cool seeing him like you can see him progress you know yeah. if you look at his first one and you look at his one now it just goes to show the power of like you know yeah. doing dailies and stuff like that power mm-hmm. of rando render <laughs> i mean i i did a hundred dailies crap it was that was three years ago yeah. now and mm-hmm. even in a hundred you can see from from number one to number 99 yeah yeah. You know, yeah. you can you can see it right there. So, yeah, I was talking to Phil well, uh, Raid Zero uh, the other mm-hmm. day and uh, uh, on Skype and he was telling me, you know, he's been doing a lot of retouching work and stuff. And then he took some time off like a week off and he just wanted to do straight C4D like all of his own stuff. And he said he's just been learning so much you know, just being mm-hmm. in it all day, you know, and I'm I'm like I'm kind of jealous of that because. You know, we have different projects where we will jump over to like After Effects or I'll be in After Effects for a large amount of time. You know, mm-hmm. we kind of split the time or at least me, I kind of split the time between After Effects and, and C4D. And it makes me kind of jealous that they I, I love it when we can just be in it, you know, mm-hmm. for like days or months. Anyway, yeah. Sorry. Well, I think we met Sensitive Cube. At- we did. SIGGRAPH. Seagraph was it mm-hmm. Seagraph last year? It was Seagraph last year. Seagraph. I don't know if he's a listener of the show or not. Yeah, I don't think we've ever talked about that, so we'll have to send. Use a one of tweet his uh, as well. One of his uh, uh, things is the uh, the show art. Oh Same. yeah, yeah. One year sensitive cue. One year random I, render. Yeah, yeah I I'm, should mention. I should mention it like next time I do a tutorial or something, or next time I show off rando render, I should like show all of them like really fast. Yeah, you yeah, know. Yeah. Um, and I haven't updated that page in so long. It's yeah, take it would me just a, be a while. His, <laughs> it would just be his, yeah. his feed. I, I don't really know. I mean, I need to check some of the tags and see if people have been doing it lately because yeah. we haven't really been pushing it. Yeah. So, in case you don't know um, what it is, uh, on yeah. our site, brograph.com slash rando render, you can click a button and it'll give you just a, a couple of random things to put together. So basically, here, let's go there right now. Yeah. I mean, it's just your prompt because that's, you know, the. The, yeah, the struggle of doing dailies. Uh, I'll just speak to my experience doing it was the open book or the blank page problem. Mm-hmm. You know, when when you have too much creativity or potential, you mm-hmm. kind of get stuck and you know paralyzed and and not doing anything. Yeah. Um. And when I was doing my dailies, I would just like see a billboard and like driving or whatever. Just you latch onto some little thing, and and I think the rando render is an example of that. Yeah. So, for example, we just got a gel lamp, or I'll click it, bamboo <laughs> hatch radio, neon truck, robotic camera. I mean, all this is pretty cool, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. Anyway. Yeah, you can see a lot of samples on the site, too, and I'll, I'll, I really need to update these. I, I mean, it's been almost a year, I think, since I updated. Yeah, totally. There's, like, hundreds more, and if you do one, make sure that you... Instagram or Twitter it and hashtag it, you know, it's rando render. We need to, we need to update the database of stuff and things. Yeah, we do. uh, Yeah. So yeah. Is is there a way to contribute words into the algorithm? Tell us what they are and we'll include it. Yeah. uh, Cool. uh, Yeah. 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 We need to do an update on that before Seagraph. I think I made, uh, I temporarily made a rando render, a plugin where every time you yeah. open a new project in Cinema 4D, it would give you a rando render. You know, 
and I did like I was it was mm-hmm. my first foray into Python and stuff like that and creating Python like plugins mm-hmm. and I had no idea what I was doing. So when I ac- I created the plugin and accidentally put it somewhere <laughs> to where it would yeah. run on startup and I could never Every figure time. out where to get the, where to go to get rid yeah. of it. <laughs> Turn it so, off. So like anytime I open R17, it's there. It's it, it opens up a rando render. It's pretty funny. If you look on uh, Instagram, for example, uh, just do the hashtag rando render. There's actually 427 rando renders. 365 on of them are sensitive. <laughs> I know, cube. right? Probably. I mean, look, all of these say sensitive cube on them right now mm-hmm. at this point. If you go further back, you find other people that were doing it when we were really pushing it. Mm-hmm. Uh, no, this one is, I don't know, unless you forgot to put his name on it but yeah when you go back like like if i were to take this like way way back a couple years ago or a year ago you'll see other people's there were a lot of people doing some really cool stuff for a while but i mean it's hard to it's hard to keep up with that for that Mm -hmm. long um i'm i'm really surprised you need to give them like an an award if we see them or something right so yeah um, it's it's truly a commitment oh dude side effects houdini actually posted one of them like retweeted or reposted oh, really? one of sensitive cubes that's cool nice right on gosh there's so many like i haven't looked at any of these some of them it's like, it's like wait what is what were the key words mm-hmm. you know what i mean that would cre- cause you to have to make something like that yeah. you know gosh, um man. that's cool man anyway so much anyway um what else do i have from the week here Oh, that's pretty much it. Check out our Slack. And I've got a new idea. It's time to spread the word about oh Slack a little bit. Let people know that you're on the Slack and just go to our invite link and send people a link to the invite. Um, if you have been following Slack the last couple of days, you'll probably notice that um, is okay. Is it so may who made the Oppo uh, cell phone spot? I have no idea. You know which one I'm talking about? I don't think about? I've seen it. Oh, yeah, no, it's it? it's super awesome. I don't know oh, if it's, it's pronounced insane. Somay or Somai. That's what um, I was trying to figure out this morning. I was actually asking David Aryev if he knew, because I was like, uh, I don't want to say it wrong. <laughs> but um, um, One of the members in the Slack, Pedro, uh, uh-huh. he actually extended that invite out to uh, Somay and mm-hmm. uh, you know got him to, to come in, and it's been cool. Um, We'll see, you know, if he jumps Cheesy, in and crazy. contributes mm-hmm. to the, the conversation or whatever. But yeah, it would be super awesome to get more. I mean, getting more people involved is always cool. Um, yeah. Especially with high profile work, you know, it's it. Yeah, it attract. It just attracts so much attention. Um, mm-hmm. So. Yeah, that's the great part about sending the link it's like hey we're in this really cool community you should check this out that's why actually that's why i brought it up is because this Pedro is a cell sent phone commercial mm-hmm. yeah wow yeah. it's and, like and yeah he single-handedly basically did this in two months mm-hmm. wow yeah yep. one one machine in a, an online render farm gosh and one geez. machine yep it's so good so there's going to be a link to that in the show notes you can check that out if you haven't already seen it because i'm sure a lot of people have seen that already and then also i wanted to talk about the monday meeting because there's a channel in there for that now and and i i want to make one of those i was getting set up and doing a meeting and a conference call <laughs> this morning Do we so, have a monday meeting one yeah it's it's in slack you well, in in the slack there's a channel called monday meetings oh. which is uh, linked to that yeah uh <laughs> Uh, Mark I'm just looking at the ones that I I am uh, I am not on. <laughs> we have a blacklist channel. Yeah, that one's secret. Oh, yeah, it's, no, it's not. <laughs> it's just <laughs> that's funny. Yeah, and just a blacklist is when you work with a client and like they completely hose you over. And okay, you put them on the list. Yep. So just be yeah. aware if you're one of those people. We're t- we're talking. God. Can can you imagine? I I don't know the the legality in that whole thing. Someone come back to us and be like, "Holiness liable." What? Because for we're talking something. about our nah. I I I totally I I'm no, down for that. I don't think so either. But you know, these days I'm 
Just make the freedom of speech, bro. Just make the channel yeah. description. All accounts in this are alleged. And <laughs> right. That's yeah, your, there we go. <laughs> right. There we go. Completely clear. Right. I think it's actually, like saying all we have in, to do uh, is... on YouTube saying I don't own any of these characters. Then it's just like, all right. Yeah. I'm good. Yeah. I'm solid. Yeah. This music does not belong to me, and right. I don't own the copyright. <laughs> yeah. All. All. All assets belong to the copyright holders. Like you're right. You're done. That's it. You can post whatever you want as long as you yeah. Disclaim that, right? <laughs> Actually, I think if on our website at the bottom we just put a big asterisk and it just says allegedly, mm-hmm. <laughs> or do that take care the, of all of it? The South Park thing. It's like any any similarities to real people is purely right. coincidental or right, whatever. Right, right. Yeah. Easy. Yep. Um, oh, sports. So things? Monday I meetings. Don't care about so, that channel. so tell us about Monday meetings because I see these links and like notes and agendas and stuff, and I'm like, I really want to check this out. Yeah. So I, I think Liam described it a little bit. I mean, I think mm-hmm. him and Mark are um, the ones who are kind of getting the ball rolling on that, and, and Liam mm-hmm. talked about it last week, where it, it's just kind of like it's a you know a, a video conference call thing. A couple people hop on, and we just talk about like. Uh, this morning we talked about um, your like rates, uh, either freelancing in a studio versus freelancing remotely. Is there a difference? Should there be a difference? Are there expectations that are different between those? Also, um, stuff like, do you share project files? Do you upcharge for project files? Do you withhold project files because mm-hmm. you might believe that is, if you turn them over, then you'll be cut out of doing revision work? You know, mm-hmm. just, these are all valid talking points. Um, mm-hmm. And I think each of us have different experiences from different markets, different regions. And um, I think it's, you know, a pretty beneficial thing to to, to hop in and, and get other perspectives, you know, because every, every region is going to be different. You know, when, when I give my examples of, oh, this is how we do folder structures here, mm-hmm. that's going to be based on like, oh, well, we do a lot of X, Y, and Z work. And right. That, that mandates like having a project file structure that does a b c thing differently than mm-hmm. d e f mm-hmm. you know and and a b c um, always be old, always be organizing yeah, yeah. <laughs> always be archiving yeah <laughs> so um speaking of octane <laughs> what <laughs> why not I don't, yeah. I don't know i just wanted to Speaking of Octane, let's go to Ravcock. Yeah, that was the worst segue ever. Worst. No, so let's bad. talk about let's talk about render engines because you're really big into Redshift. Redshift. Mm-hmm. And um, if people don't know your work, like give people a, kind of a rundown of what you do for the most part. Oh yeah. Um. Well, I'm a C4D person. I like to think that i've positioned myself as a freelancer in my area as the quote-unquote the cinema 4d person obviously there are a handful of other artists but um i've done everything i think in my power to make me be the first person who comes to mind when when Mm -hmm. people want a freelancer for for cinema 4d um Mm -hmm. all my work is kind of like on site at least up until this point so that's worked out Mm. well for me um just kind of focusing on this year I'm trying to push a little bit more into like cinematic developments, you know, trying to make almost movie like, you know, shot compositions, lighting styles. Um, you know, in the, in the past I've done kind of the, you know, the stereotypical octane, you know, greebly emissive mm-hmm. light, whatever stuff. And, you know, that's all fun and cool, but I'm trying to branch out into some other stuff. Um, a lot of cars and other random oh, interests yeah. that I have, like, godzilla and gundams and whatever cool (laughs) stuff so just just trying to find ways to like make work as consistently as i can that is also interesting to me Mm -hmm. um like by picking subjects or topics that i like and i'm engaged in you know it's just like bringing my real life hobbies into cinema um you know it increases engagement so Mm -hmm. at least at least i've found did you build okay you you did a a photo at some point and it was like a garage of all your cars basically Mm -hmm. a render of a garage of all your cars did you build every single one of those from scratch or are they just models that you had like what's the 
Um, so it's it's a bit of a mix. Like so, with a lot of the mm-hmm. automotive stuff that I do, um, sometimes it's a model that somebody is you know painstakingly modeled and they sold on Turbo Squid. Other mm-hmm. times, yeah. it's a model that I got from a friend, and maybe they got it from somebody who I don't I don't know who knows where the yeah. model <laughs> came from. And so they kind of come in as in a very a variety of quality levels you know some of them will be better than others um one big thing with i guess cars in particular is like headlights and tail lights mm-hmm. um a lot of that needs to be like properly modeled or the geometry needs to be there um mm-hmm. for the example of like a headlight you know the different layers of glass or ac- acrylic whatever um mm-hmm. you know some of them might have ridges horizontally some of them might have ridges vertically some of them might be um like knurled you know like on like a microphone you see like that little like kind of crosshatch diamond sort Mm -hmm. of texture um Mm -hmm. who knows you know and 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 so you to most accurately represent that in a render i find that having geometry for that is the most important thing on replicating that so like i'll go through and either remodel or fix up existing parts of those models you know sometimes you can get away with just leaving the large portions of the body like alone um, and not having to touch them too much other mm-hmm. times i will completely customize it and you know make like you know side skirts and fenders and you know big spoiler and all that fun stuff you know from when i was a kid playing need for speed you know I'm, i might want to do that from time to time so it's just kind of like all over the place but to answer your question in large part no i'm not modeling the cars entirely from scratch by hand myself mm-hmm. um i I'm certain in my skill that I could do that if I wanted to devote that much time, mm-hmm. you know, as a resource to a specific car. Yeah. Um, but I've heard that also, like uh, you mentioned, you know, headlights and taillights. I've mm-hmm. I, I've heard uh, that that can be one of the most like annoying parts uh, when dealing with like cars, like three D cars and stuff like that, because they never know whether or not. Like these are the final production ones, you know, or something like that. I I don't know who no, I'm modeling that. a new car. Oh yeah, yeah no. or like yeah, like headlights are almost always going to change at last minute or something like that. I can't remember who I heard that from. I've I've definitely encountered that um, more so on the shot video side. Um, like through my previous employer, they would do a decent amount of automotive stuff, you know, mm-hmm. shooting like really gorgeous beauty stuff with like Russian arm, you know, cameras and, you know, the whole nine yards. And there have been times where I've been given footage of a shoot and they were like, the car was painted yesterday. There are no bulbs in the headlights. We need you to track in X, mm-hmm. Y, or Z lens flare or, you know, whatever into this mm-hmm. footage. So like, I guess in a way that I, I, I can say there is probably some validity to your question matt you know Mm -hmm. stuff like that can change really quickly like on the pre-production cycle while the car is being like debuted and and, Mm -hmm. you know they're getting the you know marketing and press stuff out a a lot of times when one of these cars isn't out there might be one or two functioning prototypes in the world Mm -hmm. um there's a, a specific truck i'm not sure i don't even remember if it's been out or whatever but i'll just say it was a truck and we got footage of it and it was the truck mm-hmm. and when we got footage of it at the end of our shoot day well i wasn't on set but you know the people that i was working with when they were on set they handed the keys off to the next media team who's going to go drive it out to a different state and do a different shoot with it mm-hmm. and it, it was mm-hmm. it was the truck that's funny yeah that's interesting well the the reflections i imagine are an issue too because i've done quite a few spots that happen to have a car in it somewhere but not necessarily as the hero Mm -hmm. and so i've never really done any of these like really really spectacular like hero car spots or shoots or uh or anything for that matter that really required the reflections to be just on point but the geometry affects that so much Mm -hmm. i imagine that it's got to be a little bit tedious when you're trying to do something like i see all these am- amazing car shots on the redshift and facebook group mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and i'm like you know one little small error in the geometry and the reflections are going to look funky 
Oh, you know, yeah. You have a, what, what, nice lines that just kind of disappear, you know? 100%. And, and I guess kind of looping back around to the, the rendering thing is I use Redshift, you know, as my primary render engine as of this year. Um, and I do a decent amount of car work for fun. You know, I'm, I'm not going to say that I do commercial car work because mm-hmm. up to this point, I, I haven't. So I'm, I don't want to postulate, you know, make myself out to be something that I'm not. But mm-hmm. I see Redshift being used a pretty decent amount, definitely increasing a lot more in the one of the Facebook groups I'm in is called like automotive CGI or mm-hmm. whatever. And they're like world class, you know, rendering artists, retouching artists in that group. And I'm starting to see more and more Redshift being used in that as opposed to something like Octane. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I'll say from my experience, the fact that Redshift can go out of core on its memory. Mm-hmm. Um, be, you know, yeah. you're, you're not limited to whatever VRAM size you have on your video card. Not having that limit allows me to do things like render ten cars in one frame because that yeah. is one project file. It's not like those were like instanced or like XREF or whatever into that right. file. If you were to open up that file, there would be ten, you know, nulls, and in each one of those nulls would be a different car, mm-hmm. full, you know, full interior wheels you know, even little stuff like bolts in some cases, you know, um, and because of Redshift's difference, just fundamental difference being a a biased render engine, it it allows it to do things that Octane, I mean, or any engine that is unbiased, it just can't. Yeah, Um, right. Now the geometry thing is solved at least soon, but... Right, yeah, And, and when Octane 4 rolls around, and you can go out of core with the geometry. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm definitely going to give it a spin. Um, I installed the 4.0 something XB2. I don't know some mm-hmm. experimental build. Yeah. And because people were like, "Hey, the denoiser's out," and I like turned it yeah. on and it turned it into a smeary mess. And I was like, "Man, yeah. mm-hmm. all right, I'll I'll, yeah. I'll shelve that <laughs> for a little bit longer." Yeah. 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 Um. <clears throat> I I'm I'm really ready for the full build of that because as soon as we're done with this project, it's like I really want to dig into four. There's so many new features that were even in three point oh eight that I haven't touched because I've just been kind of I've been trying to convince you that we should you know try out Redshift for a project you know or yeah, Arnold. It's just for a never project. time for it. That's the problem. It's just like it's like do we really want to do this now and then run into problems. You know, it's it's almost like for me personally, I'm going to have to just start doing dailies in it or something if I want to get into it. Well, you know, unless yeah. I have a whole bunch of extra time to work on a project, but that's not usually the case. The clients usually want it tomorrow, mm-hmm. you know, and it's mm-hmm. like, well, if you want it tomorrow, I'm not going to learn how to do this thing in Redshift. I'm going to stick with Octane. I think that's, I think personally for me, that's my biggest hang up. And that might be the case for a lot of other people. It's just like, it's not that I can't do it. It's just I could do this faster right now and get it done, get it out the door. <laughs> you know, Liam says he's a Skype client. call away. <laughs> yeah, and and yeah, I, I know I am as well. You know, I yeah, I used Redshift for the first time in June last year. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. I did this teal colored Porsche nine nine three. I just like I grabbed the model. I grabbed like this little like shipping container thing. I kind of made like a little loading dock sort of scene. Mm-hmm. And I was like, all right, you know, I'm going out of town next week or whatever. I'm not, well, I was staff then, so I wouldn't have been taking on like freelance work or whatever, but just Mm -hmm. like, you know, I was poking around at night and I was like, okay, it's a little bit different of a node graph, but I know my way around it. You know, rendering is rendering, doing materials is pretty much the same. It's like, okay, one of them, it's called a gradient node. One of them, it's called a ramp node, you know, but you just build up that information over time. It's like, I. If if I were to count every render engine I've quote unquote learned, mm-hmm. like from when I started like in Maya six years ago, like I don't have enough fingers to count that many render engines. If mm-hmm. if I'm being honest, but that doesn't make yeah. me like a better artist. It just makes me ever so slightly more familiar with getting up to speed on the next one. So it's let's true. say let's say right. Arnold for GPU comes out. Let's just be crazy and say like Seagraph or whatever mm-hmm. you know. And, and two months it gets announced. Like, yeah, I'm going to be all on board (laughs) with that and I'm going to be jumping in like right away. And, but I'm not going to be afraid and say like, oh, I know nodes in a different system because (laughs) nodes are nodes. Yeah. 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 You know, are you, have you used, uh, do you have a background in Arnold? Um, 
I used it for a month at my last freelance gig. Mm-hmm. Um, I had used Arnold. Man, this is like when the first Pacific Rim came out. Okay. And I think Sony used Arnold a pretty decent amount on that movie. And so mm-hmm. like at the time, it was kind of like the hot new kid on the block. Yeah. Um, and this is when it was Arnold only. And it wasn't publicly available, I think. Okay. Like you, you had to be a studio to buy it. So yeah. like I had yeah, a teacher... Yeah who worked at a studio and, and he would demo it for us, um, you know, cause he, you know, he had access to one of the, uh, you know, a license key or whatever. Cause like you could just, it'd be like one of those crazy invite only things, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. and, uh, so that was like, you know, five years ago and I was like, okay, this, the way the render settings work in Arnold is kind of weird because like your anti-aliasing quality, whatever you want to think of, like in Octane, your samples would be like, 2048 or 4096 or whatever yeah in yeah. arnold it's like four yeah it just yeah it's yeah, like, yeah it's like that's, one that's, through that's six like, or whatever I, I actually i i really enjoy arnold like as so i went you know i've been playing around with all of them and the mm-hmm. last chance i had yeah. to play around you know i played around in arnold and i i enjoyed it more than i did redshift like i felt like it was much more familiar to me you know, this is just me personally. Yeah. Um, uh, 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 but the, uh, I, I always had a hard time clearing up noise. You know, that was mm-hmm. my biggest beef was clearing mm-hmm. up noise. And then, you know, I, I'd, I'd up the samples and it would just jack up my render time a whole lot. I yeah. It's, it's a fine line and, and I'm not going to proclaim to be any sort of expert, um, mm-hmm. in, in Arnold specifically, you know, I used it in production a total of four weeks you know it's like, yeah you're, you're never gonna learn any engine. Not an expert in four weeks yeah <laughs> all right wait who who would have known um but there are some you know there are some shots that went to final that you know i was the one who submitted it to the farm mm-hmm. so like you know i i was finishing some shots you know and i guess that's kind of a testament to you know arnold's familiarity like you said is it's not so bad that you can't just jump into it Mm -hmm. And I don't think most render engines would would fall to that problem, honestly. I I think they're all pretty capable and they're all pretty straightforward to get into. You know, I think cinema by nature lends itself to being a little bit more user friendly. Mm -hmm. And with that, I think comes more of a willingness to like get into and like try new stuff. Yeah. Uh, You know, there's not like as much of an apprehension, I think, from artists who use cinema to like you know jump into a new plugin or oh yeah. let's let's get into substance design or let's get into yeah zbrush whatever you know i think it's like a you know it's a big pipeline and and people are always willing to help out and i know i was definitely spamming the the arnold channel in in your guys' slack when i was on that job because yeah you know, i would run into oh this <laughs> issue where i'm not getting the right shadow for this mm-hmm. like glass cup that i'm rendering or whatever because you would expect like you know a see-through a see-through glass cup like this to emit some sort of shadow from the empty part and a different sort of shadow from like the liquid part or whatever. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. And just like figuring out, okay, I would know how to do this in every other engine that yeah. I'm familiar with. How, how do I, do I translate do it in a- that information right. to another one? Yeah. Right. Yeah, and yeah. it's like, oh, you got to go find the opaque <laughs> checkbox and uncheck. Right. Yeah. Whatever, you know, yeah. every engine's going to have that. Yep. Yeah. Well, um, I guess let's kind of slowly transition into <laughs> our topics while we're talking about render engines, mm-hmm. because <clears throat> um, while we're talking about this, I did want to mention one of our topics, which was the uh, Instagram thing, because you have been, we were you know, talking before the show and you were talking about you know, scheduling your posts, scheduling your social stuff, what works, what doesn't work. Um, you know, we're not really big on the Instagram thing. We posted some stuff here and there. Um, I do notice that when we post dailies and we put a, a million motion graphics hashtags, we tend to get more likes and we mm-hmm. get more um, followers. Mm-hmm. Um, so what are your findings right now, like as far as experimenting with that whole thing? Yeah. Uh, well, so obviously caveat, I'm not a social media professional. You know, I'm, I'm a rendering artist. Mm-hmm. So I guess maybe try this if you want to, if you're a listener, but I've been posting <laughs> for the last going on two months now, I've posted once a week. Um, 
and I try to post either on Mondays or Wednesdays, somewhere in the noon to three o'clock Eastern time, um, somewhere in that range. And mm-hmm. for whatever reason, I don't know, because now Instagram is run by an algorithm, I don't know if that algorithm is happy at that time. Yeah. I, I don't, I, you know, I don't yeah. have like a, I don't have a business account on my Instagram, so I don't track like the analytics and like page views or watch time or whatever. I'm not into like all of that, but what I will say is at the sometime end of April, beginning of May, I was somewhere in like the 500 follower mark mm-hmm. and now I'm a little bit over 1100. Mm-hmm. So I've about doubled by kind of employing this quote unquote strategy mm-hmm. of once a week, you know, I'm putting the same amount of effort into what I would do at night and on weekends, you know, in my fun time as you know, somebody who just sits in front of their computer an unhealthy <laughs> amount of time and right. is always in cinema. Um, but I'm, I'm trying to compact that into like a once a week quality animation of mm-hmm. some kind. Um, and I found that that is like really drastically improved, um, engagement levels. Um, I guess another benefit of that is like the work quote unquote being higher, higher end or better. Mm-hmm. However yes. you want to quantify that. Um, that what's work nice will, is your work doesn't just look like it's uh, a bunch of garbledy gook through t- thrown together with an emissive right. material and oh, you know y- right yeah I mean you know I I had that if you scroll back far enough you'll you get to my 100 <laughs> dailies and you'll, you'll see some you know some real vintage people 2014 era stuff mm-hmm. um, nice not gonna shy away from that but like the last couple of weeks or in months you know trying to put in higher end work gets reposted by like those big um other accounts that will have like 200k followers uh-huh. and they just repost mm. other people's stuff i mean mm-hmm. you know the yeah. the times when they tag the person or they put the little like repost icon in the corner and it says your handle you know that stuff is 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 all good and cool um mm. and it certainly helps you know i had a um the train station animation that uh, me and my roommate collaborated on uh, a couple weeks ago that got you know reposted probably 10 times across a handful of different accounts and Mm -hmm. you know got like little features on websites and stuff and you know if you're if you can sit in front of your computer seven days a week do you want to make one post that's seven days of effort or do you want to make seven posts that are one day of effort yeah right i'm just experimenting with it um yeah that train animation was super cool yeah and, and and totally hats off to my roommate you know uh nick parenti uh you know he's he's tagged on that he you know obviously did the bulk of it with the character stuff and like the environment Mm because i did the 3d train and the platform he did everything else so he did like the illustrated trees the illustrated background Mm -hmm. the illustrated characters so he he put a lot more time into it than i did um Mm -hmm. but that's sort of the fun thing that that series that we have uh you know i kind of came up with it about a year and a half ago i call it uh five dimensions Mm -hmm. because it's like a 3d thing mixed with a 2d thing Mm -hmm. three plus two Mm -hmm. is you know i like that this is real this is real real (laughs) you were i thought you were going to go into some uh uh interstellar type stuff you know no there's no no bookcase there's no bookcase here no it's just (laughs) it's a simple simple grade school math here um but yeah that's it's it's an opportunity it's cool because it allows me to work as much as i want on a piece it allows the other person to work as much as they want on a piece and um you know, I, I kind of like built that little train thing. I built that before we went to NAB. Mm-hmm. So mm. that was like two months ago. Yeah. You know, if I open up the V1 project file of the train and I date the first render, like that's April, I don't know, 3rd or something. Mm-hmm. Um, and then he just took his time, you know, really developing all the character stuff. We knew going into it what we wanted to do because, you know, he's more into the After Effects and kind of like explainer video. Mm-hmm. side yeah, of yeah. side of motion yeah. graphics so he's you know really experienced with like doing thumbnail sketches and you know actually like boarding out an idea mm-hmm. you know who would have thought that like if you draw the little thing out as an <laughs> idea beforehand you'll have a better idea if it works yeah or not before you get into the computer and like my you know caveman brain like i can't you yeah. give me a pencil and a paper and i just i i shut off yeah. <laughs> so, um I relied on him a lot to kind of develop the composition. I was like, okay, you like Japan, I like Japan, you've been to Japan. 
<laughs> you know, he shot a bunch of photos of that actual train station. And I was like, okay, let's, you know, take a couple of those pictures and come up with an idea here. And then he, he like kind of thumbnailed it out. Um, if you check out his website, uh, Nick dot work, um, mm-hmm. he has like a really kind of detailed breakdown of, he, he's got all his character thumbnails, the early concept sketches, you know, uh, isolated versions of the characters, all that cool stuff. So if you like that piece, if you saw, uh, it on my, you know, social media or other social media around, around the webs, um, definitely check out his in-depth thing. Cause I'm giving him all that, you know, all that leeway to, to, to do the breakdowns and do the process stuff. Cause you know, I grabbed a, a model of a train, I fixed it up, put some materials on it and like just animated it along the tracks. And then mm-hmm. he did so much more to make that into like a cool piece. You know, I don't want to, I don't want to take the wind out of his sails right. on that. Um, so that's something I, I feel really strongly about is like, I love collaborating, but I'm also like hyper, um, hyper detailed on like writing out like what I did, what I didn't do. Right. You know, if, if you look at my demo reel mm-hmm. on Vimeo and you, you open up the description, it looks like a, like a, a term paper bibliography. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that's just like for me as an artist, you know, I don't, I don't ever want to be accused of, you know, taking credit for somebody else's work. Right. You know, if right. I freelance at a studio, upcoming segue. I mean, that's really good. I was going to say that. Like, if you're yeah. sending out your demo reel to someone, you know, the first the first question with any person who's checking yeah. out a demo reel is how much of this, how did, much you of this did you do? You know, yeah. and if yeah. you're saying, oh, I just bought the the stock models off a of Turbo Squid and blah 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 or something like that, you know, it's. Well, good well, to I'm going to be out. I'm going to be to- totally open to that. Like, if somebody wants yeah. me to render render a car, or, like animate a car driving and rendering it, like I'm going to you're dang well sure that I'm going to be buying that stock model yeah. and I'm going to be, you know, doing my, you know, process of like, you know, maybe re topologizing it or, or whatever. And like, you know, I'm not modeling a car. Yeah. If you want me to render and animate a car driving around, <laughs> I'm not modeling the car. If you want me to model the car and pay me to model the car, then, then I'll model it. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, but yeah, no, I don't think anybody expects that, you know? Right. Cause that's totally not how production works. You know, right. we just finished a thing with, you know, it's it's a thing that you use on your computer every day. Um, it's not quite out yet, so I'm not going to say it. It's not like a new product mm-hmm. or whatever, but it's just, you know, the, the company involved or whatever. And we're like, oh, we need a model of a microchip. It's like, okay, we jump on Turbo Squid, we Google microchip, mm-hmm. PCB, motherboard, you know, whatever. And we, we try to find the best, the closest fit. And then we tweak that, you know, from an art direction standpoint. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like, okay, I don't like the way that these little resistors are shaped or like, we don't like them being orange. We want them to be gold or, you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. Then you go, right. you go in and you edit it. Okay. Like, yeah, I don't need to model a microchip from scratch if, if a stock model version of that exists somewhere, because yeah, it's totally. a, it, it's a better use of my time to take that model and not have to start from scratch mm-hmm. and get to a better ending product you know something that looks more beautiful or animates in a cooler way because i was able to devote other time or you know other resources than just having to model that from scratch for sure um for sure and and i this whole year i've kind of approached you know my work you know on instagram and whatever is i'm not shying away from downloading a stock model of you know that cable car gondola thing that Mm -hmm. i just made it's like okay yeah i bought that that cable car Mm-hmm. I could have spent a weekend modeling that, but mm-hmm. does that change the end result? No, yeah. because I wanted no. I wanted to make like a moody kind of atmospheric, you know, sound design thing. I you know I jumped into audition, and you know I started kind of learning my way, poking around through that. Obviously with you know help from friends and Slack and Twitter and stuff, but it wasn't like oh I want to model a cable car. I was right. like no I want to I want to <laughs> I want to render this cable car going into like this misty you know, ravine right. and I want to build up this like sort of like silent hill or like whatever vibe, you know. The it, point was to create the the image, not to practice modeling. Right. 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 And on, on the flip side of that, because I didn't model it, I'm not gonna be showing like wireframes, you know, like a wireframe render that right. shows like, you know, mm-hmm. the topology lines because I didn't render that. You, you know, like yeah. the shoes that I rendered a couple months ago. I didn't model those, so you're not seeing me do a breakdown of that. 
it's like, okay, I added the laces and I added like the stitches and stuff. But to me, that still doesn't mm-hmm. warrant enough to say that like I transformatively altered the model right. in a substantial enough way that like me as an, just my personal outlook, I I don't feel that I've done enough to that to warrant saying like, oh yeah, I modeled this mm-hmm. because yeah. I didn't in that case. And I've seen people ask that question either in email or Slack or, or other places about client work. And I'm like, no, dude, like there's no reason you have to build anything yeah, yeah, yeah. from scratch mm-hmm. for a client. Like, this, like Unless well, they're specifically the asking thing. for it, then. Yeah. I mean, it's just like, oh, you need a, you need a car in the scene, you know, um, do you want me to build that for you? I don't think any client is going to say, yes, go ahead and spend <laughs> I would weeks like, and weeks yeah, yeah, modeling yeah. that. You know, th- they're going to be like, oh, you can get that for $100 on TurboSquid? Yeah, mm-hmm. let's do that. Mm-hmm. But, but on the flip so. side, you know, I, I, am a, I consider myself a proficient modeler. You know, a, a big part of the, mm. the previous month-long freelance job that I did, the first two weeks almost entirely were modeling, and then I kind of jumped in and modeled some extra stuff in the second two weeks. But mm-hmm. like in this one shot, we needed a, a printer to fall in from off screen and kind of like land in a like a trash bin. Mm-hmm. It, you know, mm-hmm. it, it had sim- like symbolism within, you know, the rest of the piece or whatever, kind of the, the narrative that the spot was telling. But like they're like, well, we, we don't want to like go Google the HP 3004B printer model or whatever and then have to like get that cleared by legal because we use like a copyrighted right. thing. You know, sometimes mm-hmm. that will happen. So you will need to model a thing from scratch and maybe your art director or whoever will have feedback on saying like, oh, we want the bevels to be the kind of this big because we're going to be doing a really harsh side light on this shot. And we want the specular, you know, the little the little hits around the rounded edges. We want those to react in a certain way. It's like, OK, mm-hmm. yeah, based on the parameters that you just outlined for me, I want a smaller bevel, like a tighter, you know, mm-hmm roundness amount you know and Mm -hmm. so you kind of need to know i think you need to know how to be able to do every part of this but at the same time that doesn't give you an excuse to do everything you know you need to pick your you need to pick your battles when you're in production and you know sometimes that means buying a stock model of a printer other times it means modeling like a really rough crappy version and then Mm -hmm. going through and doing like your primary animation and then lighting which is what wound up happening. And then you go back over and you do a second pass at the model, you know, a week before production right, wraps, right, because right, right. now yeah. you found more time in the budget or, you know, the schedule opened up in a, in a way that allowed you to go back and revise that model, for example. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, um, using Instagram is one way of getting your, your work out there and getting your name out there. But another thing that is, really good as well of course is networking and meetups are you are you involved in any meetups in your area like how is the industry where you live there's a yeah i i I think i've been told that there's a pretty strong uh, uh community in detroit right yeah no there's a super awesome community here um you know people want to think that all of the cool motion graphics is happening in la and new york but you know, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm here to say that, you know, there's some cool stuff happening in the Midwest, you know, in mm-hmm. Detroit, you know, Chicago, you yeah. know, with half res, they've, they've got a cool, a cool thing going on. But here in Michigan, we've got, you know, uh, we've got Michigan MoGraph Mondays. Um, it happens mm-hmm. consistently the last Monday of every month, barring, you know, like Memorial Day or Christmas or whatever, you know. Um, but yeah, that's, that's tonight. Cause you know, if you check the calendar, this is the last Monday of June. Mm-hmm. And yeah. there's no interrupting holiday, so yeah, there's a MoGraph Monday tonight, just like there's a MoGraph Monday every month. Um, you know, our the organizer of our event, uh, Julie Kraft, she's done an amazing job keeping mm-hmm. consistent, and it's been going, it's been going strong monthly. It's about to hit its fourth year um, wow. in August. There were some prior to August 2014 that were maybe like a little bit more sporadic. Or maybe it was like alternating months or, you know, attendance like, oh, there's only like a handful of people. So we did like, like way less formally. But now it's kind of grown into being somewhere in the 20 to 30 mark, uh, people attending every month. There are some times where 
it will happen at like a different studio because it does, you know, kind of roam around the Detroit area. There are, mm-hmm. you know, probably 20 different venues that it could be held at, you know, different studios, different agencies, whatever. Um, and so some of them will be a little bit bigger just by nature than others. Yeah. Um, you know, some studios might be, you know, a little bit more famous, a little bit more sought after, whatever. Um, or a sp- particular presenter might be like oh this is a, a super awesome job we want to see more of this or whatever mm-hmm. and and you know we'll do like breakdowns presentations pretty good mix of cinema and after effects and even the after effects stuff sometimes it's not purely after effects like it'll be you know a decent amount of like photoshop illustrator work um because you know we've kind of got like all of the disciples covered you know there's some like some world-class cell animators here that's cool. um like like really top notch like cell animation you know frame by frame stuff and then we've got a, a you know a huge stable of people who are super awesome in after effects you know design animation quote unquote you know mm-hmm. and then mm-hmm. you know there's a pretty decent contingent of uh you know cinema 4D people here that you know I'm I'm super happy to to call myself a part of mm-hmm. um you know I present pretty pretty regularly um mm-hmm. you know i kind of have to like keep myself in check you know it's it's not a cinema 4d meetup mm-hmm. it's a right. it's a mograph meetup you yeah, know yeah, so right. it's like sure i could present something every single month if i wanted to but mm-hmm. i i don't think that people would want to see that every single month i mean maybe they would but you know it's it's definitely cool to open it up you know the last month we had some of the the people who do cell animation mm-hmm. um Colin and Rachel, they they presented like some really killer stuff that they had both worked on recently. Um, you know, they've been on like, you know, other podcasts and and you know, getting getting their names out. So we're all kind of in a you know, a rising tide lifts all boats sort have, of have you found that the uh the networking and the meetups and stuff like that that through that you've been able to get a whole lot more work? Oh yeah, no, totally. I, I've been freelance since the beginning of December. And all of my jobs that I've done, like as a motion graphics artist, have been on site jobs. And all of those have been through people that I knew or had met or had been referred to by people mm-hmm. that I've met at our MoGraph Mondays. You know, that's the, awesome. The, the first big thing that I did was like a six week auto show thing. And mm-hmm. my name was referred to the producer there by, uh, you know one you know one of the people who's an organizer of our event and then another you know a second recommendation who was like yeah get this guy you're doing cinema 4d you know go go get him on board and it's pretty much just been snowballed you know that same way since Mm -hmm. that's awesome so i yeah to to answer your question i'm really huge on on local networking um you know i i know it's easier said than done to start a meetup in mm-hmm. your area if one doesn't exist you know i know that you guys have the dfw <clears throat> yeah. c4d thing and, and i think it would be kind of cool to talk about like what each of ours does differently um yeah because we're like we're a little bit smaller lower key but it's more consistent and i think mm-hmm. you guys are kind of like a flip mm-hmm. side of that like they're bigger yes. but they're less they're like less twice frequent. a year yeah. yeah 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 it's kind of like a quarter res for <laughs> dfw <laughs> um it and at those events, and this is kind of what Liam was commenting on in Slack this morning, even going to NAB, Seagraph, Half Res, all of those, you really have to talk to people at those too in the same way that you do at networking events. And even if it's somebody who is, um, you know, who you feel is maybe too high up there, too important to talk to, I don't think for the most part that anybody really feels like that in this industry that you know oh why are you talking to me you know that kind of thing oh no never. everybody's mm-hmm. willing to you know i mean maybe there's a couple that are a little snooty about it but for the most part i think our industry is like very open you know so don't feel like you know oh it's it's nick campbell i can't go talk to him like he's a very nice person and mm-hmm. wants to talk to you about what you've been doing and you know uh dailies or um i don't know five second projects or whatever it is so you know don't be afraid to talk to these people and then on the flip side of that the other thing liam said is is don't assume that 
just because you don't know somebody or you've never heard of somebody before mm-hmm. that they're not a good contact. That's the other side of it yeah. because mm-hmm. it just just talk to everybody. Don't really don't try try yeah. not to like. There's a lot of us out these. there who are very you know outgoing and love to talk and mm-hmm. love to chat and stuff like that. And there's yeah. There's some of us who are super quiet, just like to watch the presentations or something like that. And, you know, but they would still be, they're probably sometimes better artists than those yeah, who are out. Those are the know. sleepers. Yeah. Those-, <laughs> those are the sleepers. It's like, I don't know who that person is. They're not really talking to anybody. And then you find out like they've done like this crazy, crazy, uh-huh. amazing piece that you saw years ago yeah. and you followed all their stuff, but you didn't recognize them because of their twitter handle or something it's like just everybody's on the same on the same uh field ray zero says uh i heard nick campbell bit the head off of a bat i think that <laughs> i i think he did it live true. on live on the max on stream ones even yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. no i'm just just kidding but no you're you're totally yeah. right um if if none of us knew what people would look you know, like if none of us knew what he looked like and he showed up like at an NAB or whatever, he'd look like the most unassuming person. So mm-hmm. you're, you're, the accountant. You think he was the accountant. You're, yeah, you know, you're you're totally yeah. right. And, and <laughs> like chat with everybody who's standing around at this meetup or standing around at this booth, you know, a NAB, a Seagraph, whatever, whatever the case may be, if you've got something different in your area, um, you know, attend that and try to strike up conversations with everyone you can. If If you've got like, you know, little like name badges or whatever, just say like, Hey, you know, walk up and, you know, I just say, you know, Hey, my name's Billy, you know, your name's whatever. And then, you know, you strike up a conversation and say, cause you know, at the end of the day, everyone's there for the same reason. If you're mm-hmm. hanging around the Maxon booth, chances are you use C4D and yeah, chances mm-hmm. are you can make a conversation about using C4D because yeah. Yeah, there may be people that I probably don't like their uh, their politics or, you know, the way (laughs) they uh, treat people. But, you know, we all speak the same language when it comes to C4D. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know. Yeah, I I mean, I I might not like what emoji reacts somebody uses in the slack <laughs> channel but that doesn't mean that i'm gonna <laughs> doesn't mean i'm gonna turn away you know a handshake or a hug right you know on on a show floor mm-hmm. or whatever you know you know sharing a sandwich or whatever in the middle of a, a long long day on the floor you know mm-hmm. it's yeah, it, liam liam says hey i just met you and this is crazy but my name is billy so call me maybe yeah or yeah, if, or, if, or if you're Raid Zero and nobody knows your name's Phil, they just you just right. say like, "Hey, my name's Raid Zero. And yeah, the off chance <laughs> that you run into somebody at the booth who doesn't use C4D, then they're gonna be like, "Okay, this this guy's an alien. He just presented a superhero name to me." All right. Um, but, <laughs> oh, we're using our superhero yeah. names. Oh yeah, yeah, like oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Spider Man. But hmm. um, I was that was the story at NAB, right? Was it? Was it? Uh, yeah, it was. Who uh, was it? Damon Milstead. Damon, Damon Milstead. Milstead. Yeah. Yeah, who was talking about talking to Phil about yeah. meeting Raid Zero or something? <laughs> no, we were all on the train, or they were all on the train, mm-hmm. and uh, uh, Damon was saying, "Oh yeah, man, I can't wait to see uh, Raid Zero's, you know, presentation." While Phil is like literally sitting right next to him, and he goes, "Oh yeah, I've been yeah. working on it for a while." He goes, "Wait, you're Raid Zero? <laughs> yeah, I've I've had that happen a lot at like all these NAB and SIGGRAPHs and stuff where we'll be hanging out, uh, like a." Uh, 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 Jan Sledeko, you know, I didn't know yeah. who I, I didn't, I didn't recognize, like, I didn't know who he was. Like I knew right. the name, but I didn't know who he was when he was hanging out with us. And then he mm-hmm. said his name and it was like completely. Dude, yeah. Yeah. Away. You're, he's, he's like a crazy world-class artist and yeah. he's just like standing next to you, you know, yep. they're talking mm-hmm. about, oh man, my feet hurt. We've been on, we've been standing here at the booth all day or, you know, we're yeah. all, we're all humans and yeah. you know, everyone will communicate you know some people a little bit differently other people might be more introverted or whatever but mm-hmm. um but i guess on the flip side of that you know if you have an interaction with somebody and maybe like they, they're not as happy or you know they're having a hard day or whatever just like be mindful of that you mm-hmm. know just it's, mm-hmm. it's like the same thing on twitter or whatever you know you have no idea what's going on in in, in people's lives so like don't write off somebody based off one interaction unless it was like something truly vile but i've I've been fortunate, I guess, to not have experienced that, um, you know, up to this point kind of in the community. Yeah. So, 
I would say it's probably relatively rare. You know, we're all super cool and we hang out and we we chat all the time. So I th- I would like to think that we're above some nasty stuff, but you know mm-hmm. who knows. Yeah, yeah. Um, the other thing I wanted to talk about because I think you were commenting on this last week during the show was uh, in the chat room anyway. Was we were, we were talking about clients and revisions and things like that, and I think you had some some good things to add to that conversation from last week. Um, so you sent some notes as well about, I think like style frames and storyboards and, you know, delivery and all that kind of stuff. And, Mm -hmm. um, I guess going from last week, um, just as far as revisions, do you have anything to add to that conversation about what you do? as far as going to clients and getting their revisions, how many revisions you do, um, the process that keeps things in line, so to speak, keeps the clients in line, mm-hmm. so to speak. Um, um, yeah, yeah, I, I've got some ideas. And, and I listened to a brief snippet of it again last night to kind of refresh my memory of what the topic you and Liam, or the conversation you guys were on. And I think it was mostly just like, when a project is starting to wind down, and you're coming up on final deliverables, mm-hmm. like, are you past the number of rounds of revision? Do you have, like, one more left? Is it going to be a substantial revision? You know, kind of that whole that whole conversation. Um, and what I wanted to contribute to that was, you know, I'm in a, a somewhat unique position, I, at least I think, in that all of my freelance work happens on site. Um, that is interesting. Least, that is really interesting yeah. to me. Yeah. That, so yes. That, like how? Okay. Sorry to like just th- completely throw the question off, mm-hmm. <laughs> but like I want to know. Like, so do you do stuff at home as well? Like work, freelance work at home, or is it, or do you find like you enjoy more going into? Because I hate going into people's offices. Mm-hmm. Like I I don't like yeah, ha- being forced too. to get up at a specific time and deal with traffic and stuff. I'd much rather do it this way. Yeah. I mean. You know, that's commuting is kind of a drag. Um, you know, I, I live fairly decent distance outside of, you know, downtown Detroit, you know, mm-hmm. so my commute, if I'm going to the city center is like, you know, maybe 17 miles or whatever. And yeah, at 845 in the morning, that kind of sucks. Mm-hmm. Um, but I did it for almost four years. So, you know, I'm pretty used to it. So I don't really mind it. Um, and what is the reason that those clients want you on site? Is it just because they want to make sure you're working those hours or is there, is it a hardware thing or? It's a good question. It's, I mean, it's probably a mix of every conceivable answer you could think of, you know, it's, yeah. but by and large, what I would attribute it to is I'm coming in to work at a studio, like a motion graphics studio. Mm-hmm. It's, not really like an agency where I'm like the only person they're like, Hey, we need an animator. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not, I'm not coming in like cold, you know, and and being a one man band. Um, because that I believe I would be able to service them better being home. But yeah, in a a studio environment, it's like, okay, we've got two staffers who are on this job and they're going to be like the primary, you know, shot finishers. And, and my role is to come in and to generate assets for them maybe model stuff, maybe rig some stuff, set up scene files, you know, pass them off to them and then maybe loop back around to the end and and work on finishing some shots as as the budget as the time schedule kind of opens up. Like that mm-hmm. was the case of, of of my last you know uh, month long booking. Um so you're you're coming in to be to be a part of a team and it's it, it's never like vocalized. So I guess I'm maybe just assuming this kind of internally but like you kind of need to come in and know your place, like know mm-hmm. your role. You know, if, if I'm coming mm-hmm. in to, to model and to set up stuff and maybe animate a handful of things, but I'm not going to be animating and finishing and rendering all 15 shots in a mm-hmm. month. Like that's just, that's impossible. Mm-hmm. So you have to, as the studio, they're picking their battles in terms of what are they allowing the freelancer, me in this case, to what are they putting me on? Because, you know, as, as the company, this would be the same thing as like if if I was to work with you guys or whatever for the first time, I would imagine that you guys would maybe want to like QC the stuff at the very end just to make sure that I'm not doing something that's going to like derail your guys' business or whatever. Obviously, mm-hmm. that's like a crazy <laughs> right. that's a crazy you know example, and it's 
I would never do it, but it just, it doesn't need to be said. It just happens. Mm-hmm. Right. You yeah. know, it, I'm not going to yeah. be the one sending links to the client when I'm in a studio because they've got a producer, or they've got like the business owner or whatever, you know, they're the one actually communi- communicating with the client. And right. I guess the, the double edged sword of that is like, you know, one, I can't say that I was responsible for everything, mm-hmm. but I'm not responsible for everything. And mm-hmm. and that's really cool because when it comes to things like rounds of revisions and stuff, I'm usually not even in the room when that phone call is happening because that budget has been set long in advance of me ever stepping foot through the door. You know, the schedule has been set before I've ever even been contacted on Slack or what, you know, however I've been approached to, to right. come in and do this work. You know, a producer met with somebody else and said, okay, we've got budget for three weeks and this is what we need. Who who are we going to call? And if they call me... Ghostbusters. Well, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if, if they, Busters. If they, if they don't call the <laughs> Ghostbusters, they call me. And that schedule, that budget, that whatever has already been set. And I'm just coming in and doing it, you know? Mm-hmm. So... Yeah. I guess, like, the rounds of revision thing is, like, because I'm shielded from a lot of these conversations, I have to... Well, one, I don't have to deal with like, oh, my that God. is convenient. That, that is very nice. But the flip side of that is I also don't have input on like, should we push back against this one request? Right. Or, or, or can we spin this other request in a way that allows us to do that thing? Like, oh, or you remember that that one test version we did two weeks ago mm-hmm. on like version three of this shot? What if we bring that back? Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. sometimes you don't get to provide that input as the person who's not on staff. Yeah. Um, and that's yeah. just kind of like. You know, it's again, it's like one of those double edged sword things. It's like, you know, I, I don't have to be in the phone call when, when somebody on some other things like, oh, we just scrapped four shots, but I also don't get to come in and say like, oh, well, what if we re do X, Y, or Z thing and we can salvage Mm -hmm. stuff from those four shots. But do you still get input? I mean, you still get input. They're just not like feeding you a whole bunch of stuff. What to do, right? Yeah, no, typically. So like, you know, the way that the last job worked out is like okay, we have a, a dailies folder, which is everything that all of us different artists are, are outputting. You know, if, if we're doing just modeling or just look dev, it's a still. If we're doing, you know, principal animation, maybe it's a GIF or a movie file, you know, a, you know, a play blast render yeah. or, or maybe like a low res render from the, the farm or whatever, you know, mm-hmm. is, is going out to the client and, okay, this is shot 14 version six and this went out on June 28th. Or whatever right so june 29th comes around oh clients got feedback on shot whatever and i'll get that page of notes um you know sometimes as the freelancer on site you're open to interpreting that on your own you know i could look at yeah. i could look at a page of client notes and because i haven't been in the room on some of these conversations i might interpret that page of notes a little bit differently than mm-hmm. the staffers would that's just the nature of, you know, because you're removed from this equation partially, you're going to have a different outlook on it. And so you kind of need to have that in mind and then loop back around with or to one of the staffers and say, like, is this, you know, this fourth bullet point, like, is that really what they, is that really what they want? And then you have, you know, you open up another conversation and, and you know, with whoever's on staff and, you know, maybe they can clarify or, or bring in feedback for you and say, like, oh, you know, maybe, maybe that one's the lowest priority on the revisions for this shot so get to everything else and then if you can sneak that one in you know eod then you know cool get to it so and that makes sense more in an environment where there's a lot of artists working Mm -hmm. you know that i completely understand that um but what, what happens to us on occasion like we have a lot of clients that they understand how the contract world world works right like they're gonna come to us and they're like i need this thing done for this amount of money, can you do it? You say yes for this amount of money. And then you just deliver that product. It does not really matter how many hours you spent in reality, you know, because mm-hmm. you agree on a set price. They're not sitting there watching you log hours or whatever. It's mm-hmm. like, if you want this product, you pay me this much. And mm-hmm. you know, we don't have to nitpick all these little things. But I have seen, you know, we've had some, some, especially when they're new or they're like a local production company that doesn't have a lot of graphic artists or they're just like an all after effects house 
and they need some this one Cinema 4D thing done because they don't do a lot of Cinema 4D, they'll be like, well, I need you to come here and work on it. Mm-hmm. And it's like, well, why mm-hmm. do you need me there? We, we don't, you, you know, we have a render farm. We've got all these plugins and all this other stuff, and we could get the job done faster remotely because everything's good to go. You want me to go work on your computer. Okay, what do mm-hmm. I have to do? I have to go up there. Uh, then find out that you don't have Cinema 4D installed, then sit there on or the clock while you install it. Or find out that you have R16 or R15 or something right. like that. Yeah, and something's not compatible. But then they want you to do it there for no reason other than they just want a warm body in the chair to mm-hmm. make sure that you're logging the hours correctly. It's like, dude, you, are you really going to nitpick if I spent seven hours instead of eight hours on this today according to what I sent you? Just think of it as price. Um, but the, but what you're talking about, yeah, that makes, that makes total sense because you have so many artists. Um, I found that typically the artists, uh, I'm sorry, the, uh, people that, that come to the table, the clients that kind of nitpick over that stuff are generally not good clients to have in the first place because, Mm -hmm. um, they're going to get really weird about how much money something is, is, Mm -hmm. uh, cost is is costing that's not a word how much money something costs and it's a very 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 minute difference between what you were going to do on side or offside in fact i think you could honestly get stuff done better and faster Mm -hmm. and better quality just by doing it you know at your office or home you know your, your private office rather than their place because it's just not comfortable even down to the little details like Oh well, I don't have this one little piece of software on my desktop that makes this easier for dragging and dropping this thing. Or mm-hmm. you know, it's like the other day um, I was somewhere and I had to make an MP3 file of something just real quick, and I'm like, oh, I don't know how I'm going to do this on this computer right now because usually I drop it in this little applet that I have and we're good to go. And I don't have that applet, and I don't remember where I got that. I have to check my email and. So it becomes detrimental to some of these clients sometimes for you to do stuff like that. I don't think they realize it. Mm-hmm. But again, that's in the smaller environments. I think what the type of stuff you're doing is they're, they're used to that mentality. They're used to having people come in and out, having things set up. Um, and so I guess my question is on that, how do you deal with going into a place and sitting down at a different computer, sitting down with different environment are you bringing stuff with you are you loading things of your own and then uninstalling them when you're done Mm -hmm. or do you bring your own gear what what is your process in that yeah i mean so there's there's quite a bit to unpack there um but you know I, i think you touched on a lot of things it's like if it does make sense for you as the artist to you know work from home more efficiently you're the client's gonna get a better end result or whatever I I feel like you should, as the artist, at least pitch that. You know, if they say no, then they say no. You know, don't mm-hmm. don't fight them on it. But you know, if 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 it's an internal thing, maybe there's not going to be as much leeway. But if if it's an agency and they're working or they're appealing to a larger client, then you know maybe you've got a little bit more leverage in saying like, okay, you know, I'll be able to do X, Y, and Z faster because I already have plugin one, two, three at home. And you don't need to buy another license for it because mm-hmm. I'm just going to be rolling like a small amount into my day rate. You know, let's just say my day rates, mm-hmm. you know, $600 or whatever, but like, I'm going to need to go buy two licenses of Arnold or whatever, you know, maybe I'm going to bump my day rate up 50 bucks a day or whatever. And that will cost, mm-hmm. you know, over the lifespan of, of that booking that will, you know, address that cost. That's yeah. just kind of like one example, but like I, I do kind of have, you know, I have a backpack, you know, I've got like a pretty decent Razer uh, Blade laptop, mm-hmm. which, you know, it's got a version of Cinema on it. It's got, you know, my Creative Cloud on it. I've got a duplicate mouse. I've got, you know, a little like kind of mouse pad thing, which is just like my preference. I don't like like having a mouse and a keyboard like just straight up on the desk. Um, so like I've got, you know, my little things. I've got a, an extra pair of headphones. You know, I've got like my MoGraph Go bag. Mm-hmm. <laughs> For, yeah. for lack of a better Your term. Your mo bag. Mm-hmm. Yeah, my mo bag. Yeah. So <laughs> so that, you know, it's got like a notebook, it's got a couple pens in it, you know. Um it might have like 
you know, a battery pack or an extra USB C cable for my phone because, like, I'm on Android or whatever. You know, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. everyone has an iPhone cord. Nobody has a USB C cord, right? <laughs> um, yeah, you know, God, so this, they're hard to find. They are. One day, who knows? Maybe it'll get better. But yeah, you just kind of prepare yourself as much as you can and and have that stuff with you. If they have a workstation, awesome. If the workstation sucks, then not awesome. <laughs> it's very rare for me to go into a place and to experience pushback on like me using my laptop that has all of my own stuff on it versus like using their workstation or whatever. And maybe if there's like a server issue and say like, Oh, we've got SMB set up on this thing and this is how our file structure works and blah, blah, blah. We can't patch you in then. Okay, whatever. Maybe you just concede that. But if my laptop's better than whatever station they've got me or got allocated to me, then Mm -hmm. I'll use my laptop. If, if the station is sufficient for what I need to do, then I'll hop on that and, you know, set up my preferences folder for cinema. You know, I'm I'm really big on like certain hotkeys and, and little scripts that will like yeah. change your layout and, you know, kind mm-hmm. of the stuff that I did in that tutorial a couple of weeks back. But like, you know, just keeping like a running list in your mind of like, okay, these are the sort of things that I need. I need with me to get a job, you know, from, from, or a station from baseline, nothing on it to at least, passable in my case you know it's never going to be perfect um you know replicating a your at home setup versus you know in somebody's office that you're going to be in for six days or whatever you know, it's, you're just never going to get a one-to-one so kind of just becoming familiar with working with whatever you've got mm-hmm. um you know if if the job calls for a specific plugin like whatever forester whatever oh we need to make some trees or whatever like you know i i've got my two machines here at my house i can remote into either one of them i can load up a project file generate Mm -hmm. an asset or whatever you know then transfer that over to myself on dropbox and then transfer it over to their server you know whatever the case may be you know just like knowing what you can and can't do like with the software you know Mm -hmm. things like using team viewer or chrome remote desktop to be able to access your machines remotely is like yeah that's like super huge you know i wouldn't yeah i wouldn't be able to be nearly as efficient as i am if it wasn't for you know operating three computers from one um which which is all doable with something Mm -hmm. like chrome remote desktop if you can sign into gmail on a computer then you can access that like Mm -hmm. when we were at neb and we were at the uh, we were at staying at the airbnb i was rendering a shot here at home Mm-hmm. And I was checking mm-hmm. on the progress of that render from my phone if we were at the show or from my laptop if we were back at the house from Vegas. Yep. Like, you know, it's 2,000 miles away or whatever. And it's like, I can still poke around. At one point, a render did crash. And I was like, oh, no, how long ago did this crash? Like, has it been yeah. all day? Oh, you know, it was like three hours I lost or whatever. But like, you know, you have the tools at your disposal to to make this stuff work. You know, setting up a new a new system with you know some plugins and stuff yeah it sucks and you kind of have to account for it on the first day but when Mm -hmm. you're coming into you know at least in my my experience coming into a studio you know freelancing you know let's say for a week or a month at a time or whatever the first day is like almost a wash yeah oh it always is yeah and yeah i feel like you guys i mean you guys both just agreed even at home you know you guys you got to get up to speed it's like, okay, are we going to do boards for this? Or are we just going to jump right into production? Mm-hmm. What's the schedule? How much, you know, there's still so many questions that you're answering on day one that there's plenty of idle time in that, that you can roll in and, you know, oh, I've got to set up a couple hotkeys on this computer. I'm going to, you know, go, go, where's the printer? I need to print off a thing so that yeah. I can like scribble on this, you know, this client's page of notes or whatever. Cause at least for me, like I like having a page of notes physically you know like you know if there's if if i'm working on a shot or whatever like i want to physically cross stuff off the list for whatever reason like mentally that's i like that um mm-hmm. so like you know where's the printer where's the bathroom what right. you know like all where's this the coffee right yeah exactly all this all this yeah. stuff that is happening on day one you can just sneak in you know oh i need to update the content browser because wh- whatever you know this thing doesn't have like whatever is updated on it you know there's plenty of downtime on that first day so i don't find it as a hindrance um and if it does become a hindrance you know maybe that freelance computer 
you know, maybe a, some other staffer's machine, you know, dies or whatever. They've got to go take it to Apple Care, and then you get shuffled around and you you play musical musical workstations, mm-hmm. uh, which which totally happens, you know, on site, you know, especially with larger teams, you know. Then that's what the laptops for. Yeah, yeah. I always bring mine that's, with me anytime. I'm that's going one of my, my my big thing is like uh, we've had that happen a lot, and that's I think it's a lot of these places. It's because we're like the only 3D people coming in. I think some of the other places it wouldn't be as big of a deal, but it's like you show up sometimes and it's like, oh, oh, you were coming in today? Oh, uh, okay, well, let me go get Bob because he <laughs> was supposed to set up that workstation and he hasn't done it yet. And you're like, really? Yeah. And you're like sitting there, you know, and then it's like, you know, noon. You guys and are paying like, us well, to I'm gonna just go to lunch. sit around. Mm-hmm. It's happened more times than I would like. I mean, it's not like, I mean, getting paid for it. It's like, okay, cool. But like at the same time, you feel like you're wasting your time. It's like if I were at home and I were working on this project, I would be emailing them, asking them questions and waiting for them to get back to me and doing other things, not just sitting here, you know, and it's kind of like a double use of your time in those situations. You try and multitask, you try and answer emails and Mm -hmm. all that other kind of stuff. And, um, with a place like that, it's like, you, you just, you got to keep your mouth shut. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because you almost want to say, dude, you're paying me right now. Why aren't you ready for this? Do you want me to come back later? She also don't want to be a jerk. Yeah. But that's the situation that I feel like a lot of times I run into doing onsite work. That's every, that's why every time I hear, oh, you got to come on site. I'm like, oh, Okay. And we actually talked about possibly charging more for on-site work because we are having to give up our entire day. Yeah, you I mean, you're talking about like multitask the the two hours worth of driving in a day. You know, right. you're losing out on that, which is time that you could be working. You know, right? So, yeah, it's um. I I see yeah. Liam in the chat. You know, he's saying his first year of freelancing. He's he said that happened a lot. You know, he, he'll come in. Sometimes you'll catch people off guard. You know, if the mm-hmm. place is big enough, th- there might be completely separate production teams that have a producer dedicated to these three artists, and then there's mm-hmm. a producer dedicated to this editor, this colorist, and this whatever. You know, they're completely different operating teams, and you might run into the wrong person at the agency, and they're just like, "Who are you? Your name's Joe. Yeah, we yeah. were we were expecting a gym, and you know whatever. You just kind of roll with the punches. You know, I don't, I." Because all of my work is on site, mm-hmm. it's just you know, it's just it, it just happens. You know, you you, yeah. you kind of expect that that junk the first day, and I think you can you can make an argument about charging more for at home or on site. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, like with anything, you can rationalize it however you want. Yeah. But like, at, <laughs> yeah. you know, if I'm on site, you can say, oh well, I I need to account for this commuting time. Yeah, if I'm at home. I need to account for the fact that I've bought all my own however many thousands of dollars of whatever. I can see so that. It, I can see it's that. In your yeah. electricity, yeah. And then, then, then yeah. I guess the nice thing is, is you can you can use that ammunition however you see fit. Yeah. You know, if you hell, if you want to charge everyone more on both sides of the equation, yeah. oh, if <laughs> as long as one client doesn't communicate to the other one, then right. how, are right. they, how are they going to know? Yeah. You know. Oh, you want me to work yeah. at your office? That's going to be more. Oh, that's you want me to work from charge, home? Yeah. That's going to be a little bit more. That's going to be more. That's a fifty dollar <laughs> upcharge, man. Yeah. That's <laughs> that's a paddling. That's a paddling. <laughs> that's paddling. Oh, that's funny. Rendering on Team Viewer. Oh, you better believe that's a paddling. <laughs> um, all right, let's talk about hardware. Are you? Building your own hardware? Are you buying stuff off the shelf? What are you doing? Um, well, I'm like a DIY computer kid. You know, I, I put myself through, you know, my first couple semesters in college, you know, based off of a computer that I kind of built, you know, on my own. Mm-hmm. It was like, I had $700 to build my first computer or whatever. And it was like, I need to render things on this. And, you know, I went on <laughs> Reddit, you know, the build a PC subreddit. Yeah, you know, it's a good one. It's a good one, but it, it mm-hmm. I, I love that subreddit because like I used to help moderate like their, their IRC, you know, before Slack was a thing. Yeah. Um, and you know, it kind of holds like a fond place in my heart, um, from like 2011 to 2013, I was like really, really into in be- being engaged in that community. But like 
man, you don't want gamers dictating, you know, your hardware for what we do because yeah, um, yeah. I forget exactly who said it in the Slack, but it was they, it was a really funny one liner they had. It was the difference between frames per second and seconds per frame. Yeah, <laughs> and I thought That's that funny. was a. I thought that was a really good line. And oh, it's it's uh-huh. totally spot on because, like, you know, if you mm-hmm. if you ask like the gamer, you know, they're gonna say put fifty percent of your machine into video cards. Mm-hmm. And it's like, I mean, for Octane, maybe that's not the worst idea, but like, you yeah. still need a specific amount of RAM. You if you're doing mm-hmm. Adobe stuff, it's like, okay, I want one SSD that has my programs and my operating system on it. I want a separate SSD or M.2 SSD for mm-hmm. cache. You know, there's there's so many variables that you can you can bring into play, and I guess that's what I like most about building you know computers myself and and being savvy enough to do it for others, um, and you know charging a little bit of a fee for it mm-hmm. is having that flexibility and say like oh okay this this box is only going to be ever used for After Effects we don't need to go heavy on GPU because you know a hundred and seventy five dollar two hundred dollar video card is you know say like a GTX nine sixty yeah. You know, completely mid-range card is going to mm-hmm. be more than enough for anything Adobe's ever going to utilize from yeah. now until, you know, the world ends. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, RAM preview is never going to work. So. I mean, yeah, no, it's that's kind of out the window. So, uh, so it's about it's about SPF instead of FPS. Seconds per frame. I like that. Yep. Yeah, SPF. SPF. Uh, yeah. SPF so, um, yeah, yeah, Mike. <laughs> oh, sorry, I've got a question for you, and I, I thought I might bring this up because um, I figure you knew a little bit about um, at least temperatures and overclocking, underclocking. I am very nervous when it comes to overclocking. Do you do any of that, or extensively? Yes, I overclock. Yeah, I, I, I push my hardware almost as hard as I can, and mm-hmm. it's mostly because that's just free performance. You know, if I could almost guarantee that you can squeeze out an extra 15% out of both your GPUs and your CPU, provided you have adequate cooling. Um, And that's something that I always keep in mind. You know, if I'm approaching building a computer for somebody, I'm going to be asking plenty of questions up front. It's like, Mm -hmm. I mean, even even little stuff of like, is this going to be like on the desk or under the desk next to you? Is this going to be like stuffed away in a closet somewhere? Mm-hmm. And then you're running like all the cables yeah. out, you know, because you know every place is going to run differently, and every every everyone's house is going to be set up in a, in a unique way. And so, provided the questions are, the, or the answers to those questions are positive, mm-hmm. um, I would encourage overclocking. And it's pretty straightforward on the GPUs. Um, there's a a program that you can use. Uh, there's a handful, but the two biggest ones are EVGA Precision X. Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. what I and use. Then, That's the one I use. Yep. Yeah. Uh, the alternative to that is MSI Afterburner. Yeah. And these are mm-hmm. you know pretty straightforward programs. You know, if you Google or YouTube search, you know how to use one of these programs, you can find a pretty straightforward walkthrough on on how to overclock your video card. And and the nice thing is is you're, yeah you're gonna get a, a bit more heat and a bit more um you know fan noise and whatever, but you're getting. Mm-hmm. A pretty substantial amount of performance that you you I mean you paid for it if you mm-hmm. if you bought the fancy you know liquid cooler whatever for your CPU or you know you've got you know a bunch of awesome fans in your in your case and it's got super sweet airflow there's nothing stopping you from yeah. from overclocking this stuff and and by and large the hardware isn't going to hurt itself um you know there's a thing on CPUs called TJ Maxx, and that's like the absolute hottest the processor will get before it like turns itself off. Mm-hmm. And for Intel CPUs, mm-hmm. it's like you know 100 or 105 degrees Celsius. So people are like, "Oh man, my CPU never goes above 70 degrees when I'm rendering." That's telling me that you've got a couple percentage points of overhead because you mm-hmm. could be pushing that thing into the 80s all day long, 24 seven, and you're never even going to dent the lifespan of that chip. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. know it. it you, Okay. Yeah. It might die in six and a half years versus seven years. Right. If you push a little bit more voltage into it. But you know, over that time that time slot, if you're gonna get thirteen percent faster on every render, mm-hmm. I mean to me it's a no brainer. Yeah. Um you have to be a little bit careful with, with the, the video card stuff because just inherently um because of the nature of like how Windows works mm-hmm. and how Windows communicates with um, the DirectX or OpenGL 
like driver, you know, how the CPU and the GPU are communicating basically. Mm -hmm. It's always going to be a little bit more prone to errors, you know, crashes, freezes, whatever. Um, But the video cards themselves, like they can be pushed, you know, every NVIDIA card is going to start self throttling somewhere in the 80, 83, 85 degree Celsius mark. Mm-hmm. And right. as long as it's not going above that, just keep keep cranking those sliders in, yeah. in yeah. your overclocking yeah. program. That's what I say. And, and, yeah. Until it starts crashing, you know, if if you open up Octane and you hit render and it crashed on a project that you know the day prior when you didn't overclock, if if that was stable and now it's not stable, okay, you know maybe dial that slider back yeah. or look into a little bit more advanced of a tutorial. Maybe you need to adjust like the voltage or you know a fan profile whatever that information's all out there on the web you know and it's just i mean it's free performance you know that that's why i was kind of turned off by it for a while because i got that software all loaded up and i just made a very small tweak just to see if i could overclock a little bit and then all of a sudden like everything in octane was crashing and nothing was working and i was like Man, all I did was barely touch this thing and it failed. And so, I, I don't know. Maybe it was just a fluke. But I was like, eh, maybe I should just kind of leave this where it is right now and just be okay with that. Mm-hmm. Oh, and there, um, there's there's totally something to be said about just having like a twenty four seven always on. You know, maybe a render node or or your media server. Or what, you know, it's like you're not going to overclock everything because um, mm-hmm. you know it doesn't make sense to. But if you can. If you can put a day into it, you know, maybe like a weekend day or whatever, if, you know, you know, plans with, you know, family or mm-hmm. whatever cancels one day and you find yourself with six hours, like, you know, put that time in because those, those dividends are going to pay off on, you know, it might not sound like much, but 8% faster. Are, think about if Octane was 8% faster on every thing you ever hit render on. It'd, yeah. it'd be like going from Octane, you know, let's just say like 3.06 to 3.08 or whatever yeah. if they if they made like some enhancement to the algorithm you've got that sitting inside of your machine at all times if you're running at stock mm-hmm. think how many lives you'd save over time you think of all think of the kubernetes yeah. right you got to set the <laughs> kubernetes well, free someone yeah. please think of the kubernetes yeah exactly yeah. <laughs> kira's in the chat and says she, she keeps her gpus at 60 on air how is that even possible jeez and living at the top of a mountain Right. Yeah. I don't I mean more power to you but I just see as I see that as performance is on the table. Crank those voltages. Yeah. Mm. And see like mine right now now keep in mind I have a laptop that I'm running on at the moment but um my 1060 is running at 67 which isn't bad considering everything it's doing with Skype and broadcasting and encoding and all of that stuff. Now I'm sure that that's going to get hotter when it's utilizing all of the GPU power to do an octane render or something. Mm-hmm. But my biggest concern, and and I I'm trying to do a little research and figure this out, is my CPU temperature. I feel like is too high. Um, I'm looking right now, and my hottest core is running at 91 Celsius. Well, it's a laptop. Laptops are. A- completely different of course than they are hotter right well it's just just by nature right it's just a matter of you know electricity and what we do on computers that draws power and and thus generates heat because electricity is just heat it's getting rid of that heat is purely a surface area you know math problem physics problem whatever you know if you look at the the big honking you know double stacked air cooler or whatever in your in your cpu like like Matt's got in the background over there with the the brown and tan fan. That's two um, of them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Like that thing. And then I got my fan right here. <laughs> right. Yeah. That that fan is more. That one fan is more than like the whole laptop can manage by itself. So mm-hmm. I would never advocate overclocking on a laptop um, because they have problems as is. They they're already throttling. They're basically struggling right. to keep themselves alive at any, at all points in time as is. <laughs> um, I mean, like iMacs are kind of the same thing because an iMac is basically a laptop reshelled into a monitor, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and so, yeah, yeah no, the, the laptops. I disregard everything I said about overclocking. <laughs> if you're if you're not on a like a, a yeah. desktop, you know, full on full blown with fans and all that cool stuff. 
Well, my actual thought is I've been looking at these articles on Razer on how to underclock your CPU mm-hmm. just a bit. Mm-hmm. And I'm really considering giving that a try because we were sitting here the other day. I wasn't even doing anything except Skyping with Matt. And I opened like two web windows and the computer just <laughs> shut down. Just gone. All the screens went off and I'm like, what just happened? It wasn't a blue screen. It wasn't an air. It was none of that. It was just off. And that's kind of unnerving a little bit because you're like, did my computer just fry? Please boot back up. And so I look at it and I look at the failure and then I start looking at temperatures on the CPU because I was feeling it like over where the power button is right under the screen. It was almost too hot to touch. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, well, I'm not doing anything crazy on here. And so I start looking at temperatures and this, the GPU is actually okay, but I'm, I'm getting a little bit nervous if I'm running at 200 degrees Fahrenheit on a CPU, is that really good? Even for a laptop, is that good for it? And I feel like maybe I need to bring that back a little. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Since I'm using mostly GPU, then I shouldn't see that much of an issue. Maybe like an After Effects, I might see a little bit of performance issue, but I would rather have a working computer that lasted longer than you know, have something just fry because I'm not paying attention to my temperatures. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I I mean, laptops are kind of their own. You have to treat them as their own thing, their own Mm -hmm. their own category. My, I mean, my Razer laptop. If I set that thing to render and it's got to work, if it's got to work its butt off for 30 minutes, like I don't even Mm want to be in the same room as it. Those fans are so loud on the thing, and you you don't Mm -hmm. let forget typing on it. You know your fingers are going to be sweating yeah. so much. Those yeah. those yeah. keys get so hot. Um, Don't actually put it on your lap as a laptop. You'll regret that. Yeah, no. I actually will take like a a book or something if I'm doing uh, even if I'm doing VR, especially I will take a book and I will prop it behind the laptop so the oops so that the laptop is kind of at a diagonal angle. Oh yeah. So that it's getting more airflow out the bottom. Yep. And it seems to actually help a lot. Yeah, when I'm when I'm on site and I'm running off just my laptop, I'll I'll stuff my wallet in that that same spot <laughs> where you, you go. can you can get the back of it to kind of sit up sit up a little bit. Yeah, um, but you're not covering the fans, right, or anything. Yeah in, yeah, in lieu of like having one of those nice like aluminum like MacBook stands. Um, yeah, because like that's not something fancy things. Y- yeah, no, I, I that's one thing that's not in my mo bag is a, <laughs> a, a stand yeah. for the laptop. But yeah, yeah. I've, I found kind of wedging my my key fob you know for my car key and then my wallet kind of like in gets enough airflow to uh nice at least make sure it doesn't turn completely into molten lava by the time the render is done well i've got a a question from somebody on slack i think this is actually from like last week but i didn't get to it in my notes um and this is from mr elsewhere's lab i'm not sure who that is i think this is a relatively new person in the slack um so i got to vent and seek some advice i work at a huge media organization doing science and medical animations mostly cinema 4d octane stuff i was brought in on a grant and for a year while they were uh negotiating the extension of said contract i was busy As F. (laughs) Fast forward to today, grant extended and no longer a quota for the reporters to use animations and stories. I've been sitting at my desk for about a month with something without something specific to work on. And the weirdest thing is everyone seems happy with this arrangement. Brought up to my editor several times that I'm bored out of my mind. (laughs) Um, And no real solution in sight. I'm starting to lose my... I'm trying not to curse on the show. This is my crap. My S. <laughs> my crap. Spending hours playing with X particles and praying for breaking news in <laughs> genetics. Any thoughts? Uh, should I quit? So effed up. The only reason I took this job was for the output they said they needed and maybe to try and win some awards, but now I'm just frustrated. Um, man. I have... No, dude. I've been in this situation. I, mm-hmm. I worked for nine months at a company where... 
we would do like the work that we were doing. It was when we were working for Samsung. I can I can mention the company mm-hmm. because they're not even around anymore. Yeah, they're really yeah. went under <laughs> the the Note Seven fiasco with all the exploding all the airplanes phones. and the batteries. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that completely sank this company because their main client was Samsung. So yeah. um, I was working some for them. In your clients <laughs> and um uh. Uh, literally, so anytime a new device would come out, so, you know, once every six months, we would be balls to the wall, like working 18 hour days, you know, for Mm -hmm. two, three weeks straight. And then we'd have nothing to do for six months, you know, like we'd get an occasional video here or there, but we, I would, I literally forgot that I got paid to do MoGraph. I thought that I got paid (laughs) to check my stocks and, uh, uh, surf, surf Reddit, Reddit all day. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Totally forgot. I'd come in every day and I wouldn't have anything to do. And it was, it was, it was great for a short amount of time, but eventually like you feel like you start to stagnate and like, you're like, you could have spent that time mm-hmm. doing tutorials, but then also you get to this point where you're like, okay, I want to do some tutorials. I'm going to do some tutorials today. Let me check Reddit. And then you get into the cycle, you know, and you didn't mm-hmm. do a single yeah. tutorial that day, you know? Like eventually I had to leave that company because I, I was, I, I was able to knock out one of their videos. Like they charge $18,000 for a one minute video. And I was able to knock it out in probably four to five hours because they didn't do anything creative. And it was, you know, it was cookie cutter basically animating PowerPoint. Yeah. Basically in a glorified glorified way. PowerPoint. So, yeah. uh, yeah, I was able to do that super quick. And eventually I just got to the point where it's like, okay, they won't let me be creative. I can't use any cinema stuff because they don't, it, it's gotta be approved by Samsung in the first place. I would love to get 3d models, but they won't do it. So, you know what? Yeah. I'm just going to leave. I ended up leaving because of it. Uh, yeah. Well, Houdini Mark, which by the way, I hung out with Houdini Mark last night. Oh yeah. How's he doing? Yeah. Pretty good. No, we had we had a good time. We talked about Houdini, of course, a lot. Mm-hmm. And um he said this is literally how I learned Houdini. So it's it's Oh, through a job that like he didn't have anything to do? Yeah, he said whatever it is you do to fill the time learning new stuff. Um it always looks great for your higher ups because you're taking initiative. So your downtime by investing in your own future and adding value to what you have to offer to the company and uh, what the co- company has to offer their clients, but yeah, gosh, take the, take the, uh, opportunity to just, I, I would learn Houdini. Mm-hmm. That's the first thing I would do. Yeah. I you agree. Know? Um, and, uh, <laughs> um, Liam says pics or it didn't happen from last night. We didn't take a picture. <laughs> we should have taken a picture and we didn't. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, learn, uh, as, as Matt Rittman said in there too, take advantage of the time learn uh making it look great 11 yeah you know, that's a good the, one. do uh, modeling tutorials anything like that's such a great opportunity you're getting paid to learn and you you have to make it not boring for yourself mm-hmm. it's up to you to do that if you want to leave it's understandable um if you are you're just dying to start working on some projects that's completely understandable why you feel that way but if it's paying the bills right now and maybe you want to leave, take the opportunity to increase your knowledge, get better at something, and then get a better job doing that thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, because you may get to a point in the next few years, five to 10 years, where you're like, I don't have time to learn a new piece of software. Mm-hmm. There's no way. It's yep. like me right now. I can't learn Houdini right now. Yeah. I have too much going on. Yep. You know? And then you're like, man, I only wish that five <laughs> years ago when I had all that time, I would have only I Houdini. had a job that paid me to do nothing. Then I could learn Houdini. <laughs> yeah. So take the take the opportunity. Um, do you want to do some links? Uh. And if the answer is no, then too bad. We're gonna okay. do some links anyway. <laughs> That's fine. Um, Day World. Have you Day World seen? Uh-huh. Is that, Master of the Night World. Uh-huh. Did you see Day World on Adult Swim? 
This is weird. I, I'm trying to figure out what render engine it's done in. Uh, it's no this creepy really. baby dude. Have you seen this? Neither of you? What? No? Is this no? the kid who, the thing who's looking, oh no, I haven't seen this. I'm so- it, it looks like a, a baby with a man's face. Okay. Uh, I'm trying to figure out what the link is. I Sorry, I gotta watch an ad here. first before I can watch this. <laughs> I'm scrolling through the Skype and I, I don't know if I'm clicking on the thumbnail or the link. Day roll. I, what? Is, okay. Apparently, infomer, infomercials is a thing on Adult Swim. They basically they call it infomercials, but it's like little shorts and things mm-hmm. like that. Um, I want to say there was another one that was on last night that I need to check out because, um, my friend that I went to high school with. He runs that uh, late night as seen on Adult Swim cool. thing, Nick Gibbons, and he's been he worked on Too Many Cooks back in the day Too with some other friends. Kind of how he got into um, Adult that Swim. That Day World I think. intro was very cool. So, so there's this whole day. Uh, there's these little, these little shorts, and this Day World thing is so creepy. And I'm looking is at this, it, and I'm like, Is this the octane? The, what was it? Shitty renders or whatever. Uh, oh man, there's a dude who used to post on Reddit all the time. It was these really weird, terrible renders and stuff, but they were like done really well. Well, I know what you're talking about, but I mean, the, I don't know who created this one in particular, but, hmm. um, I'm trying to look and see my friend Nick, if this came out, he was talking about, cause he did too many cooks with this guy and then You know, he's been on this show, and then he said something else was supposed to come out, like, last night at, like, four in the morning, so I'm looking for that, too. Hmm. Um, It looks like this might be it. Um, Oh, this is, like, a full... This is, like, 12 minutes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Now, this isn't the one he did, but this is, like, what they do on their infomercials slot, and I guess he... um, he worked on this other one, I think, that just came out called Final Deployment 4 Queen Battle Walkthrough. And it's on infomercials on Adult Swim. So I'm going to link to that in the show notes as well. I haven't had even a chance to watch it, but, you know, if, if they worked on too many cooks, then you know it's going to be good, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, that's actually his daughter in the high chair and too many cooks. Oh, yeah. So That's funny. Yeah. Um... A cheat sheet for social media video aspect ratios. It's funny. You notice premiumbeat.com does all of these blog posts. Yeah, they've been doing a lot of blog posts lately. At first, I was like, oh, you're trying to get, you're trying to just get more hits to your site and all that, which they, they are. Obviously, obviously everybody wants more hits to their site, but, um, they've actually been posting some pretty decent articles. Like this one is called a cheat sheet for social media video aspect ratios because what happens when you, do a video now, it just doesn't go to, you know, television. Mm-hmm. It doesn't go to just YouTube. It ends up on all these different platforms. And more and more, we get clients who are like, well, whatever you do, you got to make sure that we can fit this portion of it inside an Instagram ratio because we uh, don't want to have to render it twice. Yeah, and, Instagram story you know. requires nineteen by, or 9 by 16. That's so weird. Yeah, because the, the stories are mm-hmm. only, they're only viewable vertically. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I suppose if you really wanted to, you could try to put it sideways and hope, pray that people turn their phone yeah. sideways, but See, Instagram in- Instagram yeah. has taken up what I've been saying this whole time. I like so many people have like, "Oh, don't turn your, you know, you got to turn it on its side. Don't do it vertically." I am all about vertical video. I am all about vertical video because where do statement. I watch most of my sh- my video? on my phone vertically. If I want to watch any of my old stuff, I'll watch it on my phone and I'll watch it vertically. I think that's what the new IGTV thing is. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I just know it's a new button in my Instagram app. I haven't clicked it, but mm-hmm. I occasionally, it, the algorithm is feeding me notifications trying to, trying to coax me into clicking on it. <laughs> um, but I think it's like, I've seen some MoGraphy people post tutorials in, but it's in nine by 16. Mm-hmm. How, Weird. I don't, I don't know. See, like, I, I don't think if you're going to do that, if you're going to do that, like, I, I'm no, like, 
I'm okay with like seeing pictures or like, you know, funny little videos or whatever. If I'm doing something serious, like I shot a, I, I shot a, my, my brother-in-law's wedding on my phone the other day. You know, I was not the the videographer. I just so mm-hmm. happened to be there and, you know, I was shooting it, but I did shoot it horizontally mm-hmm. the correct way. Yeah. You're going to want to do that because yeah. people are going to play it on their TV. Right, right, and- right, right. You know? I don't know. But if I'm, I'm, I'm if I'm taking video of my kid doing something funny and I want to send it to all my family members, I'm not going to do it horizontally. I'm going to do it vertically. There's two kinds of people in this world. <laughs> there's horizontal video shooters, and then there's awful people. <laughs> all right, whatever. No, I don't agree with it at all. It's all about it's all about the the viewer. Instagram's mm. four by three anyway, or one one to one. Right. Well, see, that's the other thing. It's like Instagram. I feel like they're taking us backwards. They're making everything back to like SD aspect ratios, and you know, like, yeah, what but year is this? When you, when have you ever watched an Instagram video on your TV? Oh, I didn't say I had. I know, but I mean, you're but, you. But tell me how Dave that makes sense are, on my phone. You, Dave, are being... <laughs> tell me how that makes sense on my phone this way. Or this because way. It doesn't make sense this either way. way. You can see it this way, and then you can scroll through your, your feed, you know? What I'm saying mm. is is you're like them old people in, uh, in like, you know, you go to an office and you got the old fogies who don't want to, like, fogies. upgrade all their stuff because they're like, oh, no, this is the way we always did it. Just because, mm-hmm. you mm-hmm. know, you've got TV and it's horizontal, you know, doesn't mean everyone's going to be viewing it on a TV horizontally. Back One in my point, day, Milstead, we had I win. <laughs> we had t- we had two forty p, and we liked it. Two forty i i don't I. Well, don't sleep no. on interlacing. Yeah. Oh, two forty p on YouTube. Oh, right, right, right. Four eighty four eighty i, you know, on television, <laughs> and then you had uh, what was no? You had more. You had like five twenty five in the UK. It's like ooh, five twenty five. Some people would actually shoot stuff in five twenty five because. <laughs> <laughs> they'd get better resolution, and then they'd convert it when they were done. But yeah, why Why the square? Why? why? I don't mind it. Just so you can see it in your feed? Just so you can see the info on the bottom? Is that why? I, I mean, you can, you can post non-square things to Instagram. When, you, when you're making a new post, I, I don't want to walk through it. <laughs> yeah, it's, I know you It's going to be awful dead air, but like, there is a little button for if yeah. something is not square... You can hit that button and it will resize to be either vertical uh-huh. or horizontal. Uh-huh. And yeah. I use that a lot. Um, it can get a little. If you just double click on the picture, it'll it will zoom out to the whole thing. Uh, when you're Kira posting on it. the chat yeah. said, "Human eyes are horizontal, but human hands are vertical." This is the eternal struggle. <laughs> hmm. I agree. With I think that. that's hilarious. What about? Um, I don't know. Uh, okay, here's here's what I think. I will be good with vertical video once televisions are all mounted that way. No. Just get well, a bigger TV. <laughs> but I hate watching stuff like that. Watching, it's like, oh. Okay, watching vertical vi- video on like a a like 19-inch TV. Yeah, that would be painful. Watching a a vertical video on a 65-inch TV, which most people have anyway, they're so dirt cheap. You know, it's yeah. not that it's not that rough. I think I think part of the problem too is that people take those videos and then embed them into horizontal videos, so then they're even smaller. Yes, yeah, you know, I'll, and then they I'll, put I'll the side stuff, and it's like so little, and you're like, why couldn't you just record the sideways in the first place? Mm. You know, because people that are okay, like, here's I'll tell you why. Because, and this is the number one reason why I do vertical video, because if, I, if I'm really close to my kid or within, like, a few feet, I can't get head to toe of him acting goofy, right? Like, horizontally. Hmm. Vertically, mm-hmm. yes, absolutely I can. Because if you look at the difference on, your, on the, the phone, and this is something I wish Apple would let you do, if you look at the difference between photo and video... Photo gives you so much more stuff than video. Video oh, zooms yeah, yeah. it in quite a bit, and it's like, okay, well, that if has I want to wanted do with to, the chip, yeah, but still, it's like, you know what? Just downgrade that to whatever my video is, and let me keep that full frame. Yeah, maybe. I'm just saying maybe. that's that's one thing that's always bugged me, and that's the whole reason I use vertical video. It's like all those people on the internet that uh, post their stuff on the internet from. 
you know, a, a fight that happened on the street right. or something, you know, world star hip hop. And then they record the thing, but and then it goes to all the news channels and all of them play them like Jeff. this, yeah. you know, and, and put the little blurred crap yeah, on the well, side. Anyone who's like taking it and putting it up, it doesn't matter. It's all about where you view it. That's it. That's my opinion. It's all about where you view it. And if 90% of says, the stuff I'm going to watch is on my phone, I'm going to watch it vertically. Kira has a good point. Vertical videos will go away when handheld devices go away, which means Absolutely. when AR takes over, we're going to go back to... <laughs> no, 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 no. When, ha- when AR takes over, you're not yeah. going to have specific stuff. It's all going to be whatever shape they want to put it in. Oh, it's geez. going to be basically... We're going to have to have a template for everything. No, won't you won't be a template. Ha- you, it won't be a template. It'll be just create something. This is the resolution that I want it to be. You know, this is the space yeah. that I want it to fill. You know, yeah, but you know what's going to happen is there's going to be like standard empty places that people put in, like in a restaurant, uh-huh. for example. You go to a restaurant, yeah, they won't have TV anymore, but they will have like a thing on the wall where you could just like throw your own video inside your AR glasses. Mm-hmm. What size is that going to be? Maybe it'll be circle. No, that'll maybe we'll get that some pentagons be, and stars well, in there, maybe. But I think I Pur- think it will be sixteen by nine because green clovers. I- <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> never mind. If you're watching a video <laughs> like that, if you're going to watch a movie or something like that, it will always be 16 by 9 or 21 9 aspect ratio. It, if you're watching it somewhere else or something, you know, it's all about where you're watching it. Anyway. Mm. No, anyway, agree, why we disagree. Get on that topic? I don't think anyone, either one of us is going to agree. <laughs> Time will tell. Yeah. Time will. That, that'll be something great to have on the next future show. Right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You know, thank goodness they believe made all video is 44 <laughs> by one. You know, that's hilarious. That's funny. Oh, anyway, all right. uh, <laughs> let's go to some other links. Uh, uh, te- the TEDx Sydney 2018 titles, Humankind. This is uh, Rich Nosworthy's new joint. Ooh. And, Have and you seen hand, this? Yeah, and a handful of others. Scott Grierson, Jeff Bryant. Of course. Yeah. Um, super Gosh. cool team. I, I know some of those guys from the um, MDA Slack. Mm-hmm. I mean, not like know them, but like, you know, I've interacted with them and, and Rich. And yeah, no, it's super awesome team. Super cool thing. Um, without getting political, I liked how overt the messaging was because mm-hmm. it is, you know, it, it's taking a stand. I mm-hmm. I felt as a viewer, and I I appreciated that as as somebody watching and, and and taking in this bit of art, you know, visually. I I liked it was refreshing. You know, it wasn't just a bunch of greebly gook, right? You know. Oh, you mean like um, naked robot people covered in goo? That's like the new thing. Yeah, emissive materials covered in like top of wire, like yeah, and c- cords yeah. all over robot robot people like Gosh. in the uh these you know, marble what do you textures call it? The, are gorgeous oh yeah they are they're great yeah we, um, we we talked about this a little bit on the what's that the monday meeting thing in the the brograph slack this morning mm-hmm. um mm-hmm. i is there is there a breakdown of this yet because I haven't seen it. There, uh, I, it I know on Rich, and I think on Rich Nasworthy's site, I think he's doing a little bit more in depth. At least, at least you okay, know, he, he's that kind of artist who you know will will do deep dives on stuff. So I would uh, keep an eye out on his site or his you know social feed. Um, but I we had this discussion um, in the the Monday meeting call thing of is how much of that is stuff like mega scans or polygon. Just mm-hmm. like off the shelf textures yes. versus like uh like handmade like a hero specific one off like substance painter or substance designer. Mm-hmm. I would be interested in in knowing like what that ratio is because I know it can't be mm-hmm. all of one or all of the other. It's got to yeah, be some yeah, sort yeah. of blend. Um, but I would be super. That interested. comes back to our our discussion from earlier about using your resources that you have available. Mm-hmm. It's like it's not like yeah, yeah. they went and made all of those textures from scratch yeah right i mean there's no budget there's no timeline that would ever accommodate you know that long of a piece having wholly one-off resources being touched to it unless it had like a feature film budget you know but mm-hmm. it's right it obviously can't so um 
that was that was a cool talking point just and and then even going past that is like w- w- what does it matter like if let's say it was all off the shelf mega scans textures does that take anything away from it i don't think so i don't no. i don't think so art, either uh, like mm, i mean it's the story uh, yeah it, it, it as stupid as it sounds art is art you know mm. it's it's mm-hmm. it, it, it design is design you know it doesn't matter what assets you're going to use you know do you ask a painter if he if he created the paint from scratch out of you know mud and colors from nature no. <laughs> right yeah did, did you did you make store. your own pigment paint or did right. you buy right. what brand of paint it doesn't yeah no you're you're totally right it doesn't doesn't yeah. matter but i think in something that is like that high profile it's fun to postulate you know mm-hmm. at least for a little oh, bit yeah. you know and, and and at least if anything it, it kind of opens up or it could open up your experience and to say if you don't know about mega scans or polygon mm-hmm. which are these these online texture database <clears throat> resources where you know you can pay like a couple you know, 20, 30 bucks a month, and you've got almost unlimited access to every sort of surface you can think of. You can type in marble yeah. and get 40 yeah. different variations of marble Yeah, if, if you want. You know, these are super cool resources. And, and and then, see, what I do with some of the Polygon stuff is I'll I'll download it if it looks close enough, and then I'll just, like, color correct it and adjust oh, yeah. it myself, oh, yeah. you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. It's mm-hmm. nice. At least a good starting point. Yeah, if if you're doing a thing and they want a green alligator skin bag. Mm -hmm. I doubt you're going to find the right bright lime green alligator skin texture, Uh but you can always download that thing off polygon and then, you know, pipe like the diffuse color or whatever through, you know, a node or even just do it by hand in Photoshop, you know, Mm -hmm. like with a a solid color adjustment layer or blending mode, whatever. (laughs) Yep. We were actually, uh, when we did the, uh, uh, not Don Julio, uh, uh, the De Leon bottles for Diageo, we were going to put like kind of a leather texture on the surface that they were on. And the first thing I did was went into the Octane uh, texture database and I downloaded that um, alien skin mm-hmm. because it's kind of a, it's, it's got that look and I just went in and completely made it black and took all the veins and everything out of it. and. That was the starting point, mm-hmm. you know, because leather is made out of skin oh, anyway. Funny. So I'm yeah. sure, you know, I don't. It probably was leather to begin with. Whenever they scan the original texture. Hmm. Um, a couple other links, real quick, before we get to. I want to get to people's people and Brograph recommends. And Matt, you and I have another conference call yeah, coming in like up. An hour and a half. <laughs> yeah. So we gotta get get that get this done. Get the show posted and get on to the. The next um, conference called Bingo. Uh, <laughs> Super important. You can't you can't neglect Bingo. Uh, yeah. Right. We can't miss our our Bingo date, Matt. Um, <laughs> Adobe has introduced Project Rush. It's a new way to create and share online video. Yeah. Matt, this was from, a link from you. Okay, so from the way I saw it, they're talking mm-hmm. about uh, like basically combining Premiere. After Effects and um, Adobe Media Encoder or something all into one app that you can use. And all on multi-platform. Yeah, multi-platform. Either iPhone, uh, Android, or your PC or Mac, you know? I was actually I'm, an original beta tester on this. Were you? Years ago. Huh. Years ago. So it, it's, like, it's, it's concerning in a way. Like, I don't know... It, I can see what mm. Adobe's trying to do, right? That they're like trying to create something that, you know, new users can use pretty easily or iPhone users or whatever. But to me, you don't think they really want to replace Premiere. You would think Apple wouldn't want to replace uh, uh, no. Final Cut Pro, but they did. Eh. With, you know? Yeah. And so that just worries me that like they're just creating an iMovie esque type, you know program that you know we yeah that people are going to be like well i created this movie in in project rush you know can you do can you edit this for me <laughs> i don't know the client yeah. yeah oh i did this on my iphone yeah yeah, yeah. uh-huh um, anyway i don't know that they're going to try and replace it like with apple it's like apple realized that their audience is people who buy iphones mm-hmm. and uh people who want to edit are usually consumers yeah and not pros yeah but adobe 
I, do, I doubt looks at it the same way. As far as what they think of their customers, they know that they're hardcore editors, designers, and all that. I, I know that they're not going to try and get rid of it. Maybe it will be kind of a plug-in type thing for Premiere or something to that effect. Oh, okay. Because it, it makes it's, sense. It, but... it was Premiere, After Effects, and Audition is what they were trying to do. Mm. And Dan Marino on the chat says it's for vloggers and YouTubers. So, I mean, I, I get, get that, that because... but then you still got people who are going to use it for, you know. Yeah. I don't know. Editing yeah. grandma's 80th wedding video. I don't know why <laughs> she would be married 80 times. Yeah. <laughs> I was trying to say 80th birthday. Yeah. <laughs> uh, sorry. Oh, my gosh. She's gotten married every year. <laughs> every, year. every year on the year. Who'd have, who'd have thunk Sometimes it? twice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I had to. I mean, <laughs> oh man. In in concept, I like it. You know, it's an NLE on your phone. I can't think of anything. I certainly haven't researched that if that's a space or not. Mm-hmm. You know, like an NLE on on phones. To my knowledge, something like it doesn't exist. I could be wrong. They but... have they have iMovie for the iPhone. You know, yeah. And I but used it the, the other mm-hmm. day, and it sucked. It does suck, but it is nice to have if you just want to throw something together real quick. You know, I've done that before, like on vacation or something. So, you know. I I suppose um, it, I I guess kind of tying back to what Matt said at the the beginning of this is like, you know, with the Creative Cloud model, they have to increase their subscriber count. mm -hmm. That's, Mm -hmm. I mean, just factually, that's what their business model has to be at this point. Mm-hmm. They've they've sold every yeah. single one of us in, in this world, this MoGraph world. We all have a, a, a Creative Cloud sub, and they're right. not going to get any more money out of us. They're just going to keep getting the same fifty three dollars a month or whatever. They got to get more subscribers, right? Be- because sense. they have shareholders and they have you know stock, whatever. They have a board of commissioners and you know all that. I get it. Mm-hmm. It doesn't. It's not going to fix RAM previews for me in After Effects, <laughs> and I guess ultimately that's <laughs> yeah. that's why I would be salty about something you know something like Project Rush coming up because in in my head you know it's, I'm sure it's a logical fallacy, but I'm going to attribute the resources that went into Rush not going into things like RAM preview, right? And that's hard yeah. for me to give up. I know it's not fair to the people who worked in those departments, worked, you know, the developers who made those products. But yeah, I don't know what I'm trying to say, but I have <laughs> no, mixed, I, I have I mixed feelings it. ultimately. The thing is, you know, that it's, it's not like they could have taken the people, could have taken the people that did those programs and said, hey, will you fix RAM preview? But you're, you're kind of like, couldn't you have taken just a little bit of that money mm-hmm. to maybe fix this? I guess they feel like they have us. Uh, trapped. <laughs> yeah, in Adobe at this point, and they're like, "Well, we don't care to fix RAM preview, or screw you." Or guys. maybe they're making After Effects two silently in the background. And it's right. taking. Yeah. It, they're spending nine years doing it. Who knows? Right. I mean, yeah. yes, I, I sure as heck don't. One I'm just hope. some guy. I'm I'm in my bedroom of my apartment, so <laughs> I have no I have no weight. My opinion has no weight in this. You know, really, when what's going on here. <laughs> And I acknowledge that, but at the same time, it's frustrating that my livelihood relies on being able to hit zero on my numpad right? and it having fishy, Mm -hmm. you know, wishy-washy results. Oh, you're a zero guy? I'm a space bar guy. I'm both. What's the difference? You tell me. There's not. There's not. Exactly. Exactly. It's just some people were hitting space bar and some people were hitting zero, so they decided to just merge the two together. Well, you can do e- well. You can set them for different things. That's what I do. No, oh. I have them set differently. I have spacebar set up to do one hundred percent. Don't skip any frames. Full resolution, audio on the whole thing. So I can really, mm-hmm. if I need mm-hmm. to see something real good, but if I need to check the keyframing of something and make sure that it's flowing well, it's zero because I'm skipping two frames. I'm doing quarter res. I use them both. Yeah. That's yeah, I mean that's that's smart. And I think ultimately the hard the hard part of being a developer for something like After Effects, you know, if you if you put yourself in their shoes, is how many different things does After Effects have to cater to? Mm-hmm. I mean how mm-hmm. people like 
Andrew Kramer who have like the visual effects esque, you know, compositing stuff and I'm doing it. I'm I use After Effects to like color correct renders. You mm-hmm. guys use it for yeah, what you use thing. it and, and my roommate yeah. uses it to do character animation. Mm-hmm. I yeah. I don't think anyone twenty five years ago when this software was made could have foreseen how many <laughs> different user bases are all encompassed by this one piece of software. But Yeah, but you know what they all have in common. They all hit zero? They all <laughs> use ramp review. <laughs> you you got me there. So yeah. Yeah, you know. Mm. Um, and there's a um one more link here, and I haven't really looked too much into this, so I don't quite understand why this is better than Twixter or worse than Twixter. It's the NVIDIA slow mo that is able to take video and turn it into slow mo video, and I really haven't looked too much into it. But have you seen some of the videos? At least they look cool. Um. I have, but I have like with Twix, with Twixter, if you've used Twixter, both of you have used Twixter yeah, before, I've right? I've seen it used. I haven't, I haven't pulled the sliders on it myself, but I've sat behind somebody who has. Mm-hmm. And sometimes it's magic. Sometimes it's the yeah. opposite of exactly. magic. Exactly. Exactly. And and that's kind of the thing. I'm wondering, you know, in in videos for Twixter when they show it off on their website, they're not going to do any of the ones that don't work. So it's the same thing with this NVIDIA slow-mo. I'm like, is this like exactly like Twi- Twixter or is there more to it? Is it using AI? Because that's the new buzzword. Um, yeah. Is I mean, dude, it, first it was HD and then it was 3D and now it's AI. Mm-hmm. It's just buzzwords all the way down. So my question is, is the stuff they're showing off kind of preliminary is it like something where they had to work a whole bunch to get it to look like that? Is it something that's going to work every time? I haven't heard enough about it, but so far it looks promising. I'm, I guess my question is, are you going to build that, allow people to build it into their own software? It looks pretty like, cool. Is After Effects going to have that technology in it? Yeah. You know? um, are you going to have to have an NVIDIA card? Does it utilize CUDA to accomplish this? I'm looking for a little more information, but. Hmm. You can check that out yeah. in the links. Links. That's all I got. Cool. Um, real quick, uh, VR corner. Is there a sale going on right now? There is. Uh, Oculus. So both Steam and Oculus are having their sales. So you oh, can okay. p- pick up Star Trek Bridge Crew for twenty bucks right now. Nice. I'll probably. Do um, that. Somebody I, I can't up. remember who it was. Uh, put a link to the Beat Saber modding guide. Oh, cool. Uh, so there's like a whole modding thing going on with Beat Saber, and people are getting super into it. I feel like this is the most I've seen any modding done on a VR game yeah. so far. So um, I haven't, I you know, I bought Beat Saber like two weeks ago, mm-hmm. and I still haven't even opened it. I should probably do that. Yeah, you should. At some point. I got too, too much into like Moss, and then I downloaded... Uh, job simulator and my daughter kind of took over and didn't let me play anymore so that's funny you know um let's uh do some beeple's people beeple's people all right everybody take out your beeple viewer of choice firing it up and we are gonna go to june 22nd year of our lord 2018 this one is called New Ride. <laughs> okay. I like it. And it kind of... Okay, so I have been doing my research a lot. Dude. Cause I, oh, sorry, go ahead. I'm, I'm really thinking about this Beeple's People book, and like, I, 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 I I've have been working on it, too. Taken... I've, I've got the story, dude. I got the story in my nice. brain hole. I was well. Don't say it on I won't, the air I won't. because you don't want to get I'll tell you away. about it. But like, okay. I, I got where it starts, what's going on, what the main things are, and how we can incorporate all this people stuff. So nice. I was so I've taken, I went to bed the other night and I was it was it was mm-hmm. racking in my brain and I couldn't get to sleep because I was so excited about how cool it was. So I have gone through <laughs> every single render from the last four years at this point. I've developed characters, characters' names. Uh, I have taken about 20 pages of copious notes, Jeez. Uh, written, handwritten. Uh, I have 
uh, some pretty interesting stuff lined up. I'll have to tell you off the air what my ideas are. And of course, in the end, I'm really going to have to get some approval from Mike Winkleman in order to do any of this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. However, um, one of those was called, I think it was like called the guards or guardians or, or something like that. And it was two skeletons kind of like this one that were guarding a portal. And I was thinking about the story of that the other day. Um, and this reminds me of that because this is like a portal that's turned off maybe. Oh, right, 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 right. Yeah. And the skeletons, and I'm trying to figure out why are there skeletons still there? You know, uh and and what do they do like what what are these what is this thing supposed to be like what kind of animal is this uh because, it looks like a saber-toothed tiger or something yeah that was that was my guess and yeah. as far as the orbs go um see if i can do the pointing on camera thing yeah <laughs> though my three can my three oh, canvas it. prints back there we've got one of them which is that glass orb with the something or other inside of it we can mm -hmm. see that this one I'm pointing to behind me is illuminated. So if you want to add into the lore, these are all old. These are like vintage 2014, 2015 era people stuff mm -hmm. where uh -huh. the the people hadn't come into question here. So I, th right. I think we're getting pre historic right. pre pre creatures existing in the people verse. Um, but these orbs have definitely been around, and I think we're we're seeing that here in the the new ride. Um, maybe this one's off because we see the one on, on the ground that's it doesn't have any coloring in it maybe that one's been destroyed yeah um, and i was thinking about that too are these guardians they've been here for so long that they've they've died and were they there to um to basically attack people who came through the portal illegally that's what i think uh, that's what i think it is you know, so, and maybe these portals were all over the place. Maybe they were in different areas. Maybe people were trying to escape. Yeah, see, because for some they can reason. make the big animals. So they made the big saber toothed tiger. Maybe that's just a regular cat. You know, it's a giant cat. Liam says it looks like a skeleton version of the robot walker we talked about last week. Which one was that? Robot walker, I don't uh, lithium now. transport. Robot walker. Oh, the yeah, one with the lithium. long arms? Now, yeah. see, and here's the thing Houdini, Mark, and I noticed last night is it wasn't called Lithium Trans... Wait a minute. What? Go down one. Okay. Yeah, yeah, but this was not called Lithium Transport on his website, and that's what's, that's what's throwing me off, because I've been looking at the names of some of these, mm -hmm. and that one, remember the, the robot had the little piece of tape on him? And it was it was called Pete or something. Hmm. Uh, let's see. I'm gonna have to load this because we looked at this last night, and I was like, "How come it's not called Lithium Transport?" I knew that was the name of it. Come on, internet, do something. Bah, there we go. Da, 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 da. Seriously, okay. Uh, doo, 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 doo. It's called Full Flex. Weird. I'm really confused. It's called Full Flex. On this version. Well, on Twitter, it's called so, one I don't thing, know. so I would go by the Twitter. Rather than his website? Yeah. Is there anything else called Full Flex? Like, in recent... I don't know. I'm, I'm really um, confused, yeah, and I don't know how to write anymore flex. because of this. <clears throat> yeah. I don't know. That's really weird. I don't know why that one was called Full Flex on. Did you the uh, did you guys do the uh, Google Triplex, the one where the guy is like all hooked up with the the headless dude and he's like r r ribbling, ribbling. Yeah. Ah. Uh, yeah. I'm mad. I couldn't I be there did, for yeah. that one. Yeah. Um. Anyway, right. I mean, I guess that's the story on that one. The next one, June twenty third. It's called Void Self. Yeah. I think this continues the storyline of the uh, the dude, the dude and the girl, you know? The dude and the girl? Yeah, like the one where they're, it's separating, oh. and I think that's in that same hangar type thing. I gotcha. Yeah. It's very yeah, pretty. I, like I, I the, love uh, the, I love the, the symmetry and stuff, like. The angles. Yeah. Yeah. Really cool. Uh, I mean, I don't know. I don't have much more to say about that one. Mm -hmm. Um. Some of these have been really great for kind of just um, 
think just thinking about the story in general, it yeah. just gets you in the mood, the vibe, and it doesn't. It's not necessarily like this is the story, but you get the idea of what this this people world is like. Totally, mm-hmm. you know. And now this is a really good one, and this is kind of different. It's out of the ordinary. Um, it's called Airlocked, and from a daily perspective, mm-hmm. I am curious if the purpose of this was to do HUD stuff. I yeah, I think so. I think so. And if he actually did these, you know, as part of a a deal, or if these were just stock pieces that he put in there. So, like, was the purpose of this daily to practice HUD, Mm -hmm. you know, for maybe an upcoming project, Mm -hmm. or or just to have it under your belt, or or is it not about that? Yeah, I don't know. Because they're very clear. They're very, very clear. See, that's the one thing that that bugged me about it, is I wish, as dumb as it sounds, I wish there was some glow, you know? I wish there was some bloom to it. Mm -hmm. Like the Mm -hmm. one on the bottom left. And I mean, look at all the different aspect ratios of screens in this era. <laughs> Notice none of them are vertical, are they? Mm-hmm. Mm. Well, it depends. Mm. It depends. Like if if you're taking like the one right above the main screen above his head, if that's two uh-huh. separate screens, but look, there's several that's vertical in there. I, Wait, where are you seeing? You're breaking up. Screens? You're breaking up. You, you're talking about the whole the 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 screen as a whole. I'm talking about individual segments. I mean, that's vertical. You know, oh, someone I, Matt, still has I, to. Yeah. yeah, go ahead. I can I can debunk that theory because I know this screen pack. It's or the, the, <laughs> oh, mo- nice. the models, not the screen, <laughs> nice. not, not the content of the screens, but the screens themselves, like uh-huh. the enclosures, is from uh, one of uh, Vitaly Bulgarov's mm. like kit bash packs. Okay. So yeah, I. I know that that one screen that Matt was postulating about the one that's <laughs> front and center in front of the viewer, uh-huh. it's not uh-huh. it's not like a separated two half uh-huh. screens. It's one. It's actually sixteen by one. nine. Yeah, yeah, or whatever. Oh, Maybe not sixteen by nine, but it's a wide screen. You know, normal guy. Mm-hmm. It's Kid Bash, man. You can use it any way you want. You know, I, mean, I, he, I was. He, did you guys watch the video <laughs> of uh, what's his name? Uh, Adam Savage when he built the uh, the one thousand. Uh, oh, dude, that was such a great video! It was such a good video. Yeah, and he he actually talks about kit bashing like real life mm-hmm. stuff. The like, one thousand what? Uh, I don't know. One thousand uh, Nerf rival bullets. Yeah, look. Yeah, so so oh, Adam okay. Adam Savage, the myth, former MythBuster, who yeah. runs the mm-hmm. YouTube channel Tested. Yeah, it's tested, on his YouTube yeah. channel. Yeah, Tested dot com. Um, and because he's he's an old school model maker from ILM from the era of you know the original Star Wars movies the spaceships all the mm-hmm. greebly gook that was actually kit bashed from real physical Models model parts stuff, yeah. that's that's what we do as digital you know as disciples of people yeah. that's what we're doing digitally <laughs> um, yeah. and to see Adam's descriptions and and thought processes from the physical standpoint i think to me, it's like super enthralling as a, totally. as a as a C four D artist. He also goes over stuff like weathering, how uh-huh. you think about how a material is built up. You know, there's the underlying metal surface, and then there's like paint. Maybe that uh-huh. paint has chips, and then on top of that paint, there are layers of grime. <clears throat> then, but not all that grime. Yeah. Is, it's not all just black dirt. It's got a little bit of brown, a little bit of gold. Mm-hmm. There's maybe some reds, and yellows, and stuff. You know, all mixed into those layers of grime. In where that grime collects, you know, stuff like using a ambient occlusion or a dirt node. Yeah. Depending on whatever render engine you're you're in. It's like that stuff is super revealing on why we do what we do. Yeah. So if if you're listening and you're interested in stuff like kind of higher level material development, I would mm-hmm. really recommend watching his one day build yeah. video series. It's it's um, very yeah. short, like the part that goes over that. You know, mm-hmm. but still, it's it's super cool. Like, yeah, it, it's it's it, it's really awesome background noise. You get to see him building stuff. You know, the way that he he bevels or chamfers something, he he has to use a, a lathe or a mill to do mm-hmm. it. But but right. that same thought process of like even little stuff of like if you're going to be making one thing, like flip a copy of it over to the other side or whatever. You know, yeah, and yeah, like, yeah. now all of a sudden you just made it look twice as more complex. Mm-hmm. Just like even little stuff like yeah. that, you can you can gleam nuggets of information from that and apply it into CG because what we do as CG is what he did 
30 years ago as a model making mm-hmm. you know, model maker. Yeah, totally. Like, on- That's what uh, Mattel or whoever it was called it back when they were putting together some of the original Star, Star Wars, Wars characters. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I saw that in the uh, that toy yeah, toys documentary thing on Netflix. Or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And they're talking about kit bashing with that, like taking an old version of a different character they had and strapping different things on it to make Darth Vader. Yeah. You know? Totally. Yeah, yeah. I had I had four hundred Batman action figures in the nineties when I was a kid. Oh and you you could bet Jeez. you could bet your butt that every single one of them was the same like mold. It's uh-huh. like, oh we're gonna change the cape. We're gonna uh-huh. we're gonna change his the shape of his helmet. Yeah. The ears are more pointy on this one. Oh this one he's got a yellow ammo belt. Whatever. It's yeah. like it's it was the same piece at one point in time and then they just made variations of it. And then yeah. and then my parents bought me them all. <laughs> they should have <laughs> just bought you the mold. <laughs> it would have yeah, been, been right? cheaper in the long run. Yeah. <laughs> that's funny. But but stuff well, but stuff like three D printing now mm-hmm. is that's like almost kind of accessible. Like you say that as a joke, but like here we are twenty five years later from those Batman action figures and it's like it wouldn't be completely out of the question to make your own action figure nowadays. Right, 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 right. Oh yeah, I've been printing my little ponies for my daughter. <laughs> We've been exactly. like paint, painting them and stuff. Yeah. For and, his and building, daughter. Like, <laughs> building little drawers and stuff for her doll houses and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not a brony. Mm. I swear. <laughs> um Let's do some Brograph recommends. Uh, don't know if you prepped for this or not. I I didn't, but I see the list of things <laughs> on the chat, and we can rapid fire these because I have solid answers to all of them. Okay. Okay. Cool. Because we're, um, we're including including life hack, right? Um. Yes. Yep. Okay. Got one. All right. Cool. Um. Let's start with favorite movie. Um. It, I don't want to say it's a great movie, but it's my favorite movie because of the way that I was raised. But it's The Place Beyond the Pines. Um, okay. It's one of those like weird kind right. of art housey movies where it's like three movies built into one. It's like each arc is totally different characters and then they come together at the end. Um, yeah, so that's my favorite movie. Okay. All right. Ryan Gosling. Uh, music? Nice. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he's, spoiler, he's only in the first third. Oh darn! Oh, oh, Bradley Cooper too, dude. I'm in. Mm, he's a dreamboat. <laughs> <laughs> what about uh, music? Um, I listen to pretty much everything that's not country or top forty Billboard. Mm-hmm. So I'll say the music. If I were to open up Google Play Music right now, it is set to the remixes of Tycho songs. So like hmm. Tycho, he's like a instrumental, like kind of chill wave. Um, yeah, okay. You know, good it, work in music. Yeah, yeah, super, super awesome yeah. working. Not, not a whole lot in terms of like vocals or just like really mellow instrumentation. Um, but it's remixes of that, so it's like some stuff's a little bit kind of out of the box, whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Hmm. Let's see, TV show. Um. Well, I don't have cable. <laughs> so the last TV show that I watched yeah. was Breaking Bad. Okay. I enjoyed that. I don't, I mm-hmm. feel like that's a cop-out answer. It kind of is. That's my, that's, how long, that's how like long saying ago I was would, that, I would like to have dinner with Jesus. I mean, you know? I watched, I, <laughs> if, if I can say anything, I watched it when it was on TV. Uh-huh. I didn't watch it on Netflix. Mm-hmm. So if that gets me any credit back at all, then <laughs> I'll take it. Maybe a little. All right then. <laughs> Breaking Bad's a very common answer. Yeah, yeah, uh, it is. yeah. I don't, I don't. <laughs> well, but in its defense, it was a very excellent show. I guess. Oh, okay, my amazing. my guilty pleasure TV show then would be Pawn Stars. <laughs> okay. Can I say that? There you go. Okay. Oh, really? you go. Didn't that guy? Didn't didn't the old man guy just die this morning? This morning? Don't tell yeah, me I that. So. Yeah, yeah, he did. I just saw an. Uh, article this I'm morning. I'm gonna have to check my trending section on Twitter. You're gonna... Pawn Stars yeah. star Richard Harrison, known as The Old Man, dies one hour oh, ago. Yeah. That is... That's crushing. I'm sorry. I'm yeah. sorry. I'm this, sorry to be the one who has to tell the, you that Is this online. the yeah. first on-screen, you know, like, I, I might have a breakdown with that information. <laughs> there you go. No, I, at first I was like, it says it says, old man dies. And I'm like, what? <laughs> Like that's like old man yells, old man at, cloud. yells at cloud, you know. 
I was like, oh, old man dies. I, I see. I get it. I, I see. Or is that, was that was his nickname was? The old man. Yeah, old man? that's what yeah, the, because he man. was Rick Harrison yeah. Sr., right? Did he own the place or? I can't I tell you the timeline so, of that. Probably. I just, <laughs> I, I just <laughs> like the show for what it is. Mark says in the chat, he says, sorry for your loss, Billy. <laughs> I, I appreciate that greatly, Mark. So, <laughs> all right. Uh, podcast, favorite podcast uh, besides Brograph. Well, yeah, I mean, obviously this is number one. <laughs> I'm, I'm, if, if I'm not here, I'm in the chat every week. Um, so next to that would be to loop back to what we were just talking about with Tested is Adam Savage's podcast called Still Untitled. Mm-hmm. Um, that mm. it's, you know, sometimes it's like pop culture, you know, whatever is the latest Marvel movie or Star Wars or whatever, but other episodes there'll be, you know, he'll talk about, you know, building a thing for his workshop or you know what's the whatever whatever the topic is uh, i think they're super cool i kind of grew up on mythbusters so seeing any any piece of media that has adam on board still is something that i i totally. tune into so he's great yeah <clears throat> like his uh his gpu versus cpu demonstration oh yeah with the uh i've seen that the- right and that might have been a mythbusters th- thing it's been around for a while you know what i'm yeah, talking about he, with the, the paint the paint guns where he's showing it off, was a, he's showing off like it, creating an it was image a presentation at a college uh, yeah, i don't know mm. it wasn't part of a tv show so maybe it was on a like somebody's random channel but basically they showed like how you would paint a painting with a paint gun if it were a cpu and it sits there and it spits out like 120 paintballs until it makes an image and it takes, you know, five minutes or something. Mm-hmm. And then they showed this other device they made that represented GPU that makes a painting. And of course, it has like 120 spigots on it. And they just fire it in like one second. They have the entire painting. Hmm. This is the demonstration between the two. You should check that one out. I'm sending it to it. you on uh, uh, Slack. Yeah, I was going to say, don't put I it in. I was going to put it in the, the chat, but I didn't want to go over. Um, all right, your favorite plugin. Um, well, I feel cheap saying that render engines are plugins because mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean they are they are plugins. Mm-hmm. Um, but outside of that, I would. And it's tough to say. I'd probably say Signal from GSG. It's um, a good plugin. I I, yeah. I find a way to use it on literally every single project. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. sometimes people get annoyed by that if they grab my project file and they're like, why did you keep, you could have just keyframed this from zero to 30. Uh-huh. <laughs> and I'm like, mm, nah, right. I don't like graph editing in the timeline. If I have this nice little, like, you know, GUI in the uh-huh. signal, you know, that little animation, you know, graph curve. Yeah. So I use that thing well, all the time. I'm the same way. Uh, recently, since I started using it, it's just so powerful. Um, I just find reasons to use it. We were working on this projection map and of course they're doing a lot of BPM stuff. So the fact that you can go in there and do BPM and measures and mm-hmm. all of that has just been really helpful. Um, yeah. Headphones. Uh, Who are you wearing right now? Uh, these are AKG K702. Um, in my Mo bag, I have the Bayer Dynamic DT 770s. Mm. which are uh, a closed back headphone these are open back so you know mm. i can hear the, the the dump truck that's unfortunately outside my apartment <laughs> mm-hmm. apologies if that's how do you, how do you like mic. that how do you like the open back i personally like it um i used to play games a little bit more frequently than i did so mm-hmm. like it, imagine like playing i don't know skyrim or breath of the wild or whatever the case may be you're in some big open environment mm-hmm. um it's like a really nerdy thing that people on audiophile forums will argue about, but it, the soundscape <laughs> sounds bigger and more like roomy. Okay. Um, mm. It's if you kind of think of like being in a ballroom versus being in a closet. Okay. It's like you know each one each one has pros and cons. Yeah. I I take the the closed back headphones, uh, the DT seven seventies. Those are my on site headphones because I'm going to be in a shared office with other people, and you know I just want it. I want to put the cans on and, and fire up you know, some music and just, you know, jam mm-hmm. out whatever is uninterrupted as possible. Mm-hmm. Um, at home, you know, I've got a door or my roommate will be out of, you know, out of the house or whatever, you know, so the open, the open headphones, I prefer if you can work without whatever around, but um, definitely cool to have both. Okay. 
Yeah, when we're recording the show, I just have cheap headphones on because Apple I want earphones. to be able to hear. Yeah, yeah I, I want to be able to hear what's around. We both have the Bose Select Comfort 35s. <laughs> well, of course. But yeah. Uh, I don't wear them during the show because I kind of want to hear what's going on externally, make sure there's no other noises mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. going on, make sure my fans aren't blowing up on my computer. I'm not going to hear any of that stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, when, when you're locked I'm in. I'm wearing the, yeah. Um, website or Chrome extension? Ooh. Um, again, I feel like it's another cheap answer, but the Chrome extension view image brings back the Google search, Google image search view image button. Yes. Cause they, yes, I do have that. They, they took that out because of like, the, there was like a Getty lawsuit or Getty was threatening because yeah. you know how, how easy it is to steal and re-upload photos. Mm-hmm. So when they took that out, that was like a day one. Like I can't function without that. I, yeah. I can't work on any yeah. project without you know saving a couple reference images or making a yeah even just making a pinterest board of things that are like-minded you know like a mood board yeah. or you yeah, know yeah. if you were pitch if you're pitching a project like a deck mm-hmm. you're like here's my mood stuff here's my inspiration you know i i don't work without that so view image is you know mm-hmm. necessary <laughs> for me i don't i don't understand that yeah uh, like sage said they took it out and we all put it back in it's like Oh, you're upset. People are taking images off of your website. Yeah, but well, like, how horrible for you. But but like, it, it's but now they're Google not. Just want to be. Google's not responsible for it. Yeah, anymore. they're not at fault now. It's like mm-hmm. it's yeah. like buying the Elon Musk flamethrower thing. If you have to buy your own fuel before you burn your house down with your new flamethrower, then that's yeah. You didn't buy the fuel from him. He can't right. be blamed. But I mean, how far is that gonna be taken? is my question i mean it's it's photos on their own site right yeah. it's not like they're re-uploading those photos from iStock. they're linking to photos on iStock. i feel like they could just well what are they upset about first of all they have their watermarks all over them yeah <laughs> i can't <laughs> you know make it. better watermarks i mean i don't know but all right and then of course life hack oh um well i've got plenty of life hacks from when i worked at a produce market <laughs> um but my life hack is if you like bananas, open them upside down. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally. Wait, why? Because you so, don't get the little stringy things. Well, yeah, yeah. You know, like when you break a banana off the bunch of bananas and you've got like the stem end, most people grab that and use that as the handle to start unpeeling the banana. Nuh uh. Right. Flip it 180 and come from the bottom. Just trust me. Hmm. You don't get the we'll little stringy that things now. that come off when you peel it the other way. Mm-hmm. Matt knows. Interesting, dude. Yep. That's mm. how monkeys eat it. Yeah. If you if you look up footage of 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 an uh, a primate op- or eating bananas, uh-huh. they open it upside down. Yep. So that's my. I life thought out. you were gonna do like a a Kirk Cameron banana thing. <laughs> no. I mean, there are some there are some out in my kitchen. I you know, but I don't want the dead air of, <laughs> you, of you, demonstrating the to, life hack on on camera. You, you, and you'll just have to Google the Kirk Cameron banana theory, but anyway. Um, let's, let's, all right. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> let's let's get out of here. We got to go uh, do our stuff and things here. Pretty yeah, we soon. got another we gotta, meeting here in a minute. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this was not a short bingo show. Cards. No, no, it is not. <laughs> uh, where can people find you? Let's go through all the the list of things. Where do you post? Most of the time, uh, most frequently, I mean, as far as work that I make, uh, I post it to my Instagram almost all the time first. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that is at Gernge, uh, spelled G E R N G E. Uh, it's mm-hmm. a f- made up name, <laughs> whatever. Um, so yeah, if you, if you type Gernge into pretty much whatever, you'll probably find me. If you don't find me by that name, you can find me by my real name. Just Billy Chitkin. Um, I believe my YouTube and my Vimeo are under Billy, and then pretty much anything else would be Gernge. So, yeah, cool. Oh, and of course my website, uh, Gernge dot com. So, all right, awesome. Thank you so much for well, coming. Well, thanks on the for show. being on. Yeah. Well, thank you to both of you, dude. Um, I knew when we when we were chatting uh, when we had the uh, the podcast at uh, at uh, NAB you know with all Mm -hmm. 300 people that Mm -hmm. were on you know and we were chatting i was like okay we gotta have billy back on yeah that was was, back on 
That was rad. Um, I think I think I found you guys pretty early on uh, as far as the podcast goes. Like mm-hmm. Maybe the first dozen episodes or so, like when That's it awesome. first oh, wow. when it first hit the subreddit, and then you know whatever life happens, and I kind of dropped off of it mm-hmm. until maybe the tail end of last year when the slack kind of picked up Mm -hmm. and then like yeah Yeah. i've been been all on board again see i met you for the we met you for the first time at at a half res last year Mm -hmm. yeah yeah and then you've been a part of our lives ever since yeah one (laughs) big happy family yeah a a mo family a mo family (laughs) (laughs) um also now you can find billy on brograph.com if you uh, go look at the tutori- tutorials, mm-hmm. um, this is our 90th tutorial on the site. This is Intro to Python in Cinema 4D. Yes, super killer so, uh, uh, tutorial. Yeah. Yes, I was very happy about this one. Yeah, so check that out if you are interested in learning about Python in Cinema 4D. And you don't have to know any Python to do this tutorial, mm-hmm. right? None at all. I all right. Go ahead and ask me what a variable is. I can't. I can't tell you. <laughs> That's like day one of coding school. Yeah, it is. I know how to copy and paste, and if you can copy and paste, then you can follow that tutorial. And a that variable is anything. <laughs> See, that's yeah. why I it's don't variable. That's a variable. I don't know that, but yeah, it'd be fun to it'd be fun to make another one. I I've got an idea. Got an idea. So I'm gonna see if I can find some time this week. But Important. that'll be fun. Nice. You get- I got. I think we got some other stuff coming through the pipeline here pretty soon too on the site. Uh, some other people doing tutorials as well. So, yep, awesome. Um, it's exciting. Yep. Have you guys seen uh the uh the Incredibles yet? Oh yeah, last no. night. Yeah, yeah. No, haven't. Go see it, and, Dave. And we can't do any spoilers, but man, Westworld. <sighs> yeah, don't do. Don't say anything about Westworld. Finale last I, night. I am, I'm like three episodes behind. Oh the, the oh man. the finale the finale was it last happened? night. Yeah, it was oh, last night. Okay. Yeah. So, All right. Well, oh, I know what okay, I'm doing the rest of the day. <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah, one of those people go. without TV, so I'm gonna go find it online. Yeah, it's on HBO. Yeah. Online. Exactly. HBO. Yeah, right. Yeah, HBO no, of, now. Of course, or I'm gonna or... sign into my HBO account. Right. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right I actually pay for the HBO account. There's a lot of good stuff on HBO. Hmm. It's worth the what is it? Ten bucks, nine bucks. Uh, did you hear about the uh, uh, the epileptic seizures that? Uh, uh, uh oh incredibles 2 yeah yo that no. the warning in front of the movie was long that was like yeah. a 45 second warning i was like they are not oh we joking. didn't even have a warning on ours it was just a it was just oh wait yeah maybe maybe we did i don't know my yeah, my was, my cousin's daughter had a seizure watching it yeah it was it was oh, straight geez. up like before the movie before the short it was yeah. like white white text on a black background for a long time uh-huh. saying like why though like what's the difference between that and anything there's, else no there's, there, there's a le- there's, there's a like legit hardcore flashes like it gave me a migraine watching it yeah it's, it's a pl- it's a plot point hmm. in the movie i mean it's not really much of a spoiler i'll just say it's a plot point in the yeah. film that there are elements visually that will trigger people with photosensitive mm. disorders mm-hmm. and it's it means it's part of the plot and yeah it, i'm not there was wow. there was one scene in particular like where that stuff was going on mm-hmm. and bill you may know when they were in that little cube of the flashing stuff that looked cool it did like, it was it, yeah, it was it like being in a club, like the strobe lighty effect yeah, of like Yeah, and it, it was weird. Like I was watching it and I was like, this almost looks like like a hand like a completely different style, you know, mm. because of the way it was shaded and colored and stuff like that with the lights. I don't know, it was super cool. Hmm. Other than the but seizures weird. part, you know. But yes, so it's like that episode of The Simpsons where they go to, yeah, where they Japan, go to Japan and there's like all seizure inducing yeah. robot cartoons. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so so not not to make light of of that disorder, but that it was, that was a very serious scene. Man, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And that's the warning. The warning was most certainly, you know, merits, you know, oh, absolutely, forty five or sixty second, however long that warning wow. was. Yeah, I wonder what caused them to do that as opposed to just any other movie. I'm le- because I mean, I understand like that there's something involved in the movie that's like really you'll flashy tell. and stuff. But- you'll be able to tell. And it's, it's not just one quick occurrence. Like it is throughout, yeah. you mm-hmm. know? Uh, okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Li- Liam says yeah. he's, I believe he said he saw it opening day and there was no warning. Yeah. So there was probably yeah. a bit of um, maybe backlash isn't the right word, but yeah. you know, there was 
concern over that. that it made it past yeah. just like test screenings. Mm-hmm. Um, and once it, you know, made it to the mass public, then yeah, no, I can totally see hmm. that giving people an issue. Yeah. 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 I do feel like you should maybe put that like as a generic thing in a movie theater now, like in the slides in between stuff. Like, doesn't it seem like just being in a theater because it is so dark and things come on and off the screen really fast that that could be it, a possibility. I, I don't know. I think it's different. Other... This is way different. Mm. I'm going <laughs> to yeah. have to yeah, see, go it see it. To go see it. Go see it. We'll talk about okay. it next week. Okay, cool. All right. Well, I don't know if I'm going to have time to see it this week, but I'll definitely try. I'll, t- I'll take you to go see <laughs> it tomorrow with my, with my uh, free points. Yeah. With your, <laughs> while we're finishing up 10 <laughs> projects. <laughs> Tuesday right, matinees look, are always the cheapest. I know, five bucks yeah. if you got a Stubbs card, dude. Mm. Can't beat it. Right? Y'all are hardcore. All right. Let's get out of here. You can rate us on iTunes, leave a review. You can also subscribe to us on your podcatcher of choice. The subscriptions and the reviews help get our ratings up, especially on iTunes. So please do that. And then newsletter, you can subscribe to that on our site. We haven't sent one out in quite a while, so we should probably do that. You can say you've been there, done that, got the t-shirt with the no bro graph, no mo graph T, the Gate and D. Simone limit, limited edition Very shirt. limited. You never know how long that's going to be around. One day the it's just going to go away. The Bab 2020 shirt. Yeah, Paul Bab, Phil the Bab 2020 is going to, uh, uh, all the profits from that go to Doctors Without Borders. And then we got the Render Things shirt and hoodie. And I would eventually like to do a hat. Ooh, well. I like That'd that. That fun, so. Yeah, but I don't know where to get a good hat made. I don't know. I have to. You should ask uh, some, uh, ask uh, Maxon where they got their hats because this is very yeah. comfortable. Something we can drop ship and not have to ship to people. Right. Because, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. All right. That wraps it up. We're on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, of course, YouTube, and Brograph dot com, and all the all the great channels, stuff and things, all the great social medias, and the stuff and things. So uh, we're gonna get out of here and uh, get back to working. Yeah. And uh, we can't wait to show you what we've been working on here in the next couple of weeks. Yeah, it's Should like two weeks, the two weeks away. Yeah, yeah, really cool projection map thingy. And uh, that's it. Until next week, I'm Dave. And I'm Matt. And I'm Billy. Have a good one. Later, bros. Pretty good, I guess. Brograph.com, an online resource for learning Cinema 4D, After Effects, and other motion graphics tools, specifically catered to help you prevail as a motion graphic designer. What's up, bros? Welcome to another Brograph motion graphics tutorial. With tutorials, plugins, and now a podcast with tens of thousands of listeners worldwide. Yeah, it's a great community to be part of. We give you professional time-saving tips, industry news, interviews, shortcuts, and lessons that help keep you current in the world of motion design. Throw in HDR Studio, take the render settings, pick the HDR, put a reflection, and gorgeous. I love projects that scare me. When our art director comes to us and asks for something that I had never done before, man, it gets me pumped. Our weekly long-form podcast will give you the latest news, help you in your file management, hardware configuration, and client relations. Learn about the latest render engines, modeling techniques, and workflow integration while staying entertained. Real nice banana. <laughs> That's so funny. All right. I'm going to live forever. <laughs> Our BroGraph talks are a chance to see the way industry leaders from around the globe are changing the face of motion design. Sometimes you got to make stuff that you're not going to put on your reel. And I'm not here to judge. The podcasts and talks include people like People, Barton Damer, Nick Campbell, Andrew Kramer, David Ariev, Chad Ashley, Paul Babb, EJ Hassenfrost, Mitch Myers, Chris Schmidt, Jules Urbach, Cornelius Dammer, David Brodeur, Andy Needham, Caitlin Kaju, Zubair Parker, Noseman, Ryan Bean, Casey Hupke, Nick Lyons, Sage, Joey Corinman, Jeremy Cox, Rick Barrett, John Dickinson, Matthias Omatola, Patrick Gosky, Brandon Clements, Steve Teeple, Tom Glimpse, Patrick Longstrom, Julia Simone, Devin Coe, Al Heck, and even Dead Mouse. You get that render done. Yeah, you better frame frame what? Our BroGraph breakdowns go behind the projects and give you an insight on what it's like to manage and maintain your own personal business or work for a large company. Join us for live sessions, check out our useful plugins, watch time-lapse projects, interact with us, and send us email questions and topic ideas. Or just hit the rando render button and do an imaginative daily that'll keep you on your toes. Take all your dreams and let's do it! 
Subscribe today and get automatic updates on the latest tutorials, tricks, tips, and inspiration brought to you by industry professionals Dave Koss and Matt Milstead. We don't care how you get here, folks. Just get here. Subscribe now to BroGraph Tutorials. Pretty good, I guess.